What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny's MCU in Review. That's right. We're continuing to rank, review, and recap every single Marvel Studios project. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes, and I'm joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. We're back, baby. We're back. We're back, baby. And it's going to be nonstop from here on out. We've got Moon Knight next week and then two months away from Thor Love and Thunder. Oh, and in between that, Miss Marvel. So much stuff. Uh, how excited are you for all of that, big dog Kevin Coelho? I can't even wait. You know what I mean? I can't even wait. Things are best case scenario right now. Let's keep it going. Woo! And speaking of keeping it going, I'm going to keep it going right to the big daddy, Greg Miller. Ouchie, ouchie. Yeah. 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 That's the energy we're bringing. I kind of like it. Kind of like it. Did you like it? Producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Tim, I've come to bargain. Or yes. 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 I love it. Nick, I want you to know I did this for you. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. did the the whole goatee situation oh. got the little the eye of agamotto with the the time stone for the chain and yeah. i was like i'm gonna, I'm not gonna tell him about it i'm just gonna show up at the theater dressed like this i got a cardigan cape let me show it off he said he he could have worn it Whoa. oh my god oh i didn't see that wow oh guys cardigan yeah. capes are like yeah. remember when i brought them is that up? a cardigan cape or just a long cardigan though i think it's just a long cardigan. It's called I cape know. Okay. Yeah, bad, yeah. Yeah. Burnt, I orange. definitely am not the arbiter here of fashion by any stretch of the imagination. Let's that, put that's this for way. sure. That's a fashion cape for sure. And I but he had to literally be... like rejigger the cape as he sat down, so it's definitely a cape. He had to like. Oh, yeah, okay. There's, okay. there's a lot of material. There's a lot of material going on back there. But I was like, I had this whole plan. I was like, I'm gonna wear this fucking thing out, and it's gonna be great. And I put it on. I'm like, I am not wearing this outside. I do not have the confidence for that. I'm already oh, a little embarrassed about the goatee and everything. So I just yeah, wore a red know. bomber jacket, and it worked. You know. But anyways, Nick, you're I welcome. saw a guy there with the with the costume, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Check out that loser!" <laughs> you know, like, and I'm glad you weren't that. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, I, I, I that. wish you had done it. I wish you had done it, Tim. I just it's think we weird. need to take a poll right now to see because what one of the things I like about it, Tim, is that you don't have a beard anymore. So I think we should take a poll with the audience right now, and if enough people vote. Will you have enough courage to keep the goatee for the rest of your life? Not a Please chance, don't. dude. Yeah, I've caught myself in the mirror a couple times and I'm just like, I hate this guy. It looks <laughs> like good. I hate him so no, much. It, Tim, as your friend, I wouldn't lie to you. It does not look good. It's it cutting edge, good. man. Goatee I've asked bad. the folks watching live on patreon.com slash kind of funny if he should keep the goatee. It is up right now. Go ahead and vote on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Wow. Live. Perfect. Vote away, Meryl. Vote away. Of course, this is Kind of Funny's In Review, where every single week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. And sometimes we do it multiple times a week, like we're about to do next week with Moon Knight being added to MCU. And we then continue Jurassic In Review with Jurassic World, the first of the Chris Pratt <laughs> movies. Um, you can get it on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny or RoosterTeeth.com. You can also get it on podcast services by searching for Kind of Funny in Review on your service of choice, and we'll be right there for you. If you wanted to get the show ad-free, if you wanted to watch live as it's being recorded, you're going to have to go to Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny, just like our Patreon producers, Molecule, Fargo, Brady, and Anonymous have all done. We appreciate all of you. So very, very much. Today we're brought to you by ExpressVPN, Chime, and Babbel. But we'll tell you all about that later. Before we even get into it, I just want to say this at the top. This is a full spoiler review. From here on out, anything is, is acceptable. We can talk about it all. So if you have not seen this movie, do not watch this yet. Do not listen to this yet. Come back afterwards because there is definitely a ton to spoil. And we're about to spoil all of it. Uh, today we're talking about Greg Miller. What's your question? Right now, I'm going to end the poll. 55% say you should keep it. 45% say you shouldn't. And then Mr. Hawks is exactly what Kevin and I said earlier. You look like you're not even supposed to be here today. You sh Before you grow the, the beard back in, you have to do some Dante from Clerks uh, cosplay for us, please. Gotcha. Gotcha. God, that sucks. Um, so here's the other situation, though. If you want some spoiler-free situations, we already recorded that review. You can check it out on Screencast. So 
if you just need some thoughts on should you watch this movie, go check that out. But if you just want to get spoiled, stay right here because we're talking about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. What a name for a film. You know, I can't believe we're here. That that's just something that is acceptable. Uh, it was released on May 6th, 2022. It had a runtime of two hours and six minutes. Perfect. And it was directed by Sam Raimi, wasn't it, Nick Scarpino? <laughs> it sure was. It sure was, Tim. And if uh, if there was any doubt uh, by hour two of that movie, you're like, Oof, this is a Sam Raimi film for sure. For sure. Uh, the music was done by Danny Elfman, uh, a longtime collaborator of Sam Raimi. Of course, they did the uh, Spider-Man movies together, and uh, that was a big deal. And then there was a falling out between them, but they have over time made up and we see them reuniting for this one uh the original dr strange was our boy michael giacchino uh so this kind of took some of the, the elements of it and uh then threw a lot of them away uh but we'll talk about all of that uh later when we give our thoughts on everything uh there was a budget of 200 million for this movie which is actually significantly less even than the first dr strange which uh, i thought was pretty pretty interesting uh, but a budget of 200 million doing pretty well as of today with the movies only been out for a Thursday night opening in America and very, very limited release internationally. It's already at $121.7 million. Not it bad. is playing on an absurd, absurd amount of screens uh, around the world. Kevin and I went to the bathroom at one point and literally walking down the hallway, it was just playing in every auditorium and you would just yeah. hear bits and pieces, like just a Slightly little bit. Off. Of they, they were all close. <laughs> But they were like none of them were hitting at the right moment, so mm. it was just a cacophony of as, madness. As we were walking to the theater, I heard "Sweet Child of Mine," "Sweet Child of Mine," "Sweet Child of Mine," <laughs> <laughs> because of the Thor trailer in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, fantastic stuff. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Our thoughts on the movie, Nick. I want to start with you. Oof. Okay, you want to come out of the gate with that one? I did not love this movie. I uh, I thought it was uh, an, an unfortunate and rare miss for Marvel. I think Sam Raimi, as much as I love him, I just don't think, and, and as much as it makes sense on paper that his style should work with the movie called uh, Multiverse of Madness, I don't, I didn't like the creative, the direction on this. I, I didn't like the music. And th that, that breaks my heart to say, because I love Danny Elfman, obviously. He's, he's you know, responsible for one of my favorite themes of all time, which is the 89 Batman. Um, but I just, I missed the Giacchino uh, uh, a soundtrack. I missed that, that sort of Baroque, like harpsichord version of it. And I think that the movie at its core kind of lost the identity of what Doctor Strange was. Um, I kind of found myself halfway through being like, whose story is this? Uh, it didn't really hit on the same level for me as the first Doctor Strange, which I thought was kind of was structured very, very well. So by the end of it, you know, the lessons he learned along the way, he was able to to sort of apply toward being the big baddie. And this one, I was just like, it, it was kind of a bit of a mess. And I hate to critique, like to get nerdy, put my nerd production glasses on, but I hated the way it was lit. I just feel like everything was lit in that bloomy sort of Tobey Maguire Spider-Man way. And it felt like this movie was made in like 2004 and that's just so weird to say like if you would have showed me this movie and then showed me the first doctor strange i would swear that the first doctor strange came way after this and that's like to me was just is just is is unfortunate to say i enjoyed aspects of it and i thought some of the performances were good but i just i, I found myself walking out of that theater being like i don't think i need to see this movie again greg miller I knew you'd ask this question, Timothy, and I feel like mm -hmm. I've wrestled with it since I've left <laughs> the theater. Like, what I come down with this one is I was entertained by this movie. There's, I think there's a lot that I want to, I will nitpick about it and do different conversations about. I don't know if it's necessarily a good movie, but I was entertained. Like, I, I enjoyed my time with it, but I'm in the, I, I am at a point right now in the same point Nick is where I'm like, I'm not excited to watch it again. Like I am not like I was leaving with Far From Home or Endgame or something like that. And I know those are high bars, Ragnarok, right? Something that isn't like gigantic where I want to rush back to the theater and watch it again. Um, I feel like it, it, the Nick, whose movie is it? I think applies. I also think it applies just like it's, it feels like a movie that's kind of all over the map. I feel like, uh, you know, I don't have issues. I like, it's this weird one where it's both, 
it was an entertaining movie that I enjoyed and I like Sam Raimi's style and I think Sam Raimi's style worked well for this movie. But then it's that kind of thing where it's like, but we knew these characters so well Mm -hmm. and did when we left Wanda in WandaVision, did I really feel that she was this far gone where I feel like what I've wrestled back and forth with because I know we're going to get into all of this later on and just as a synopsis to get to everybody else's. This movie is one of those movies that I've talked about on these shows before that is a comic book movie. And I love comic books, but there's plenty of comic books I read. And I'm like, man, this came together quick. And man, that doesn't seem exactly like what the other writer wrote for this character. But whatever, it's a comic book. And I feel like that's what it is here, where it's enjoyable and all these things. But it feels like a issue of a comic book that somebody else jumped into and took over and did some stuff with. And I'm like, I don't know if that was really how. Okay, cool. And like the way America Chavez is introduced and the way a bunch of ideas are introduced and the way things are just kind of thrown in there. It's like man, I could have gone for more of this, more with this before we did this, but this is where we are. And okay, I'll just take it at face value. That's what it is. I think Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is an entertaining film, but I'm not in love with it. Andy Cortez? Um, I think the movie was messy and cheesy and shockingly, like, I loved it. I fucking love this movie. Um, I think think that uh it is paced immaculately like this thing just doesn't stop and in for me i never felt rushed and i never felt like we hung on any moment for too long except for uh Raimi's cheesy ass editing in a lot of moments um but how about the music fight <laughs> the the music fight i so shouldn't weird. have liked and i liked it and i don't know why Greg, I don't have these answers for you. Hey, man, enjoy <laughs> you enjoy. Fun. I'm not trying to take it away from you. Everybody knows that, like, I, I going back to, um, you know, the Spider-Man trilogy, I just didn't really you like those movies a whole lot. Movies. Upon rewatching part one, I was like, man, this is kind of a classic. Like, you, you got to give it to part one at least. Um, but the parts like the music fight, I feel like, well, you know, he was always super into music, so there's some justification there. I don't know why I like this. It's coming together for me, though. Uh, The movie was thrilling in a lot of different moments. I think the action scenes were paced really well. And everything just felt like it it never slowed down. And if for any moment I stopped to think to myself, I'm not sure if I like that next that last part. We're on to the next part and I'm just as invested. And I never once felt bored. I was always kind of super interested in what was happening on screen. I didn't love America, um, the, the actress. I it, it didn't feel like as natural to me as a lot of the other young actors in the well, like I always say a lot of the other young actors. I'm mostly just talking about Tom Holland and uh, Florence Pugh, who's definitely not like as young as they are. Um, She's I'm thinking, 10 years younger than Tom Holland. Oh, Jesus. Real life. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, She's I mean, to be honest with years you, old. she was born in 2006. To be honest with you, watching her, I'm like uh, getting some high school theater vibes kind of right now. Like uh, like the best actor in the high school theater for sure. I agree, you with, know? That. I agree with that. Um, but yeah, man, I, I fucking really loved the movie. And it's not just for the cool surprises that there were. I I just felt like I was super entertained by it the whole time. And all the horror elements were scary at points and it went way further than i thought it would have gone violence wise um i i thought it was awesome seeing wanda like pop the fuck off and seeing her at full power just wreaking havoc i loved this movie i thought it was an absolute blast kevin uh so i got to watch this movie twice right the first time i walked out and i was like i think on the kind of funny scale i'm gonna put like somewhere around like a four maybe going down a little bit to that three range and i was kind of thinking i don't know how much i actually liked it i do think it's a great movie i don't know how much i liked it but re-watching a second time i i was utterly shocked at how much more i enjoyed it i'm not sure why um but like i just felt like i got a lot more out of it and um i guess i had more time to look around and like it, there's so many little things that tie back to the first movie that I like little Easter eggs and stuff that I, I like I caught and was excited about. Um, I think I, I, and I said this on the spoiler free review, but like, I, I feel like America Chavez's character, like I really enjoy it. I, I liked the banter she had with Dr. Strange and Wong and how quick things are. They go back and forth. 
Um, I I think that having Sam Raimi direct it definitely like it's very clear he's got that spin that is very much his directing style. I think in the long term that's good for the MCU. Like, because for before that, so many of the movies do look like they were all using the same cameras, directed the same, using the same filters. And um, not that that's not great, but like, I think we're at what this is like the 25th movie or something. We are getting to the point where like some diversity is good. And Eternals also had a, a big shift in, in the visuals. Andy, I'm sorry, you, you raised your hand. No, I just want to piggyback off of what you're saying right now. But whatever oh, you ahead. No, jump in, jump in. I mean, yeah, I, I, I meant to bring that up, actually. Um, I, again, I don't always love Sam Raimi's style, and it's cheesy as fuck in a lot of moments. Uh, go go back to hell, cannon shot. Like, so, uh, it, so hokey. So it's so hokey. hokey and corny in a lot of parts, and all the sort of fading and close-ups and movement, and, like, it's, it's just a lot of really bad stuff that I don't love. But... Uh, I totally agree with Kevin that um, I think that's one of the biggest things you can talk about in a lot of these Marvel movies is they start to feel pretty uh, formulaic in a lot of moments. Um, Mm -hmm. And even though I I love 60% of them and I like a lot of the other ones, um, I, it it almost kind of reminded me, Kevin, of when we watched the Star Wars visions anime, Mm -hmm. uh, anime anthology series where each episode is a standalone Star Wars story by a different anime studio, and you get to see the twist that they put on that. And I hope we start to see this more, where we will start to see what other directors can do in their vibe. This is like, this is Sam Raimi's take on a Marvel movie. The last movie we got to see, um, um, Chloe Zhao yeah. in Eternals, her spin on a Marvel movie. I would like to see what other directors can bring to the table in order to kind of you know, pump some new blood and excitement mm-hmm. into the MCU. Nick. See, I'm I'm fine with that, but don't have them be the second one, right? Because I think it's actually like I think Taika Waititi was the rare exception to this. Every time they have another director come in and try to build off of what the other person did, I just I think Scott Derrickson did a really good job building the world and the visuals and the vibe of Doctor Strange and having it be kind of weird and kind of darker and more serious. And same way, we just came with a sledgehammer and ru- and just destroyed I, all see- of that for me. I, and I'm I I'm totally you're... fine with Sam Raimi coming in, but give him a new character, let him build that vibe and that world out, but, because the, these two movies just don't feel like they're the same character to me. But I mean, the, the, I don't like this is a Doctor Strange movie, but I think in a, uh, this is also a very much a Wanda movie, and she adds an element of fear and scariness that. But that's I think it's meshes weird because... super well with Sam Raimi and with I... his style. Like he loves Dutch angles, but like. A lot of them I very much vibe with, you know, when they're shooting everything sideways and you just kind of like it does make that scary tone that I think is makes sense for Wanda's character. Yeah, but I also think I think Wanda's character was was the character that I that I think I have the one of the biggest problems mm-hmm. with. And I think were it not for the fact that we got an actually really good what I would say a really good nuanced story with WandaVision, I'd say, OK, this is kind of a cool take on this. But to Tim's earlier point, like or maybe it was Greg's point earlier, we kind of have the resolution of that story. And I think it's done really, really well in WandaVision because it's all it's all character-driven and less, like, big fight-driven stuff. And I, so at the end of that, I'm like, I, I, I just... I kind of found all of her motivations and everything she was doing in this kind of flat, unfortunately. But here's and I'll the- disagree. Like I'll disagree with you guys a little bit on the America Chavez stuff. I thought she did a, a serviceable job. I just think they don't give her anything to do in this movie. It should have been her story, and it wasn't. It was kind of Wanda's story, and it was kind of Doctor Strange's story. Even though he was like, they kept shoehorning and all that stuff with Christine that I couldn't give a shit about. I'm mm-hmm. like, at this point, man, I, I, I don't know, like. By the time we get to the wedding, I don't feel for him. I don't feel like he's in that place emotionally. I feel like he's on this brand new journey and he would have left all that stuff behind him as far as Christine's concerned. And they're trying to give you this B story plot with with her that I just think felt flat, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, I think I really like the Wanda stuff because I feel like we're all kind of remembering the end of WandaVision differently. And now we have more context about what's actually happening because like, if you guys remember, at the end, she's kind of like, living a peaceful existence in this farmhouse, but really we see her with the dark hold uh, going like learning from it essentially. And now we know that is like the big thing about the dark hold is the, the dream walking. So it's like, it ended with her becoming the character we see at the start. Like 
she is set and we hear her kids playing. So that's her exploring the multiverse for the first time, figuring out that her kids exist in other multiverses or yeah, other universes. Go ahead, Craig. And you're not wrong, Kev. I just uh-huh. feel like there is a tonal disconnect between even that Wanda learning how to use the dark hold and the evil as shit Wanda we see in this movie. Mm-hmm. And so that character but, development, yeah. I think, where she goes into the villain sector, even though she doesn't think she is, yeah. and that's what it's like. And it's always back to the old thing. You know, the, the villain of the story thinks they're the hero, right? Right. That's correct. And I can see that in the multiverse of madness, Wanda. But Raimi is directing her to be an over the top witch. Which again, I enjoy in the film. I just feel is like such a a leap from the Wanda we saw right. at the house with I, the Darkhold, and I mm-hmm. totally get the Darkhold has you know time has passed, blackened yeah. her fingers, which is such a cool thing, and you know mutated her mind and done all this shit. It's just still a stark but difference from the Wanda I, we left. I wanted to see that, right? And one of yeah. the things I liked about the Wanda and Wanda Vision is that you actually empathize with her. You understand why she's done this thing. You understand why emotionally she has created this bubble because she's so devastated by the loss of vision, all the things she had to do to get to this point that she's coping with that. And I think Mm -hmm. it was such a cool metaphor for how you cope with loss and how you cope with depression. In this one, I would have liked to see her devolve into that and struggle with her relationship with Doctor Strange, who she knows and has fought beside and all that stuff. Instead, we pick her right back up. She's like, ah, I pulled one on you. Everything's in Thanos and all that stuff just kind of fell flat. Yeah, but I mean, I also think that at the end of WandaVision, she has to kill her two kids to release all these people from the hex. And that has a lot of weight that is just at in the end of WandaVision, it's glossed over. You know what I mean? Right. Where it's but like, at the same time, I think she broke even further than she had but when she just that. killed. We never I mean, saw that, right? You're, 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 I mean, you're, you're, I feel you're like... sort of filling in the blanks right now for, for yeah. all that stuff. We saw her exploring some stuff, but we saw her at the end of it remorseful Well, I mean, did we see her break when, when she when – after Vision, right? I mean, we saw her break down yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, we saw her scream into the air and cry and then fall to her knees, which is – and there was that whole, I mean, we had all the buildup of Infinity War leading to her that moment where she had to kill him. And then the falseness of him just being like, nope, I'll wind it right back. Yeah. So she had to kill her, per, that her love for life and then see him come back to life and then see Thanos rip the fucking stone out of his face and have his body go gray, which, by the way, is one of the best visuals in all of so MCU. Good. And so all that stuff, like I just, all I'm saying is I empathized with her. As the, as the villain in mm-hmm. WandaVision. And that's a very powerful thing. It's a p- very powerful emotion to evoke in an audience member. And in this one, she was very much, to me, comic book, cookie cutter, Sam Raimi 1.0, I'm evil. And I'm doing this thing that the motivations to which just yeah. seem kind of like, wow, we really we really kind of painted her into a corner here. And and she's just not uh, yeah. at all. That's like, right. I, feel, I, I just uh, disagree I, with that in the sense that like, I feel like the setup for it, while yes, they could have gone deeper into it, like there's a lot of base there for her totally collapsing. And on like she's not planning to do this in any violent way. She doesn't want to go to Camartage and kill everyone, but what other choice does she have? They won't give this the person up, you know? I, I know I think- Tim's been sitting on the bench for a while. I just want to hop in and say that um, I think if they would have shown any sort of allusion to her becoming that evil then that would have spoiled the story in a way here in this movie where Mm -hmm. i going into this movie i'm not expecting wanted to be the actual villain in the movie i'm expecting like a lot of movies you think you know who the bad guy is and it turns out there's an even bigger bad and then the bad guy and the good guy have to join forces so i thought at some point one is going to eventually turn I thought it was a pleasant surprise that she stayed the bad guy the whole damn time. I thought that was really cool and awesome. And I think that if we see any more of a shift of her character into you maybe thinking, oh, shit, she's more evil than we sort of were led to believe at the end of WandaVision. I think that possibly ruins that sort of surprise there. And because I love that moment where she's like. Uh, and where's America? And like, yeah. how do you know her name? I, and like, yeah, I, didn't, huh, I didn't tell I her. No, he, he does. She, he, she, he doesn't even say that. Right? She calls it. She's like, you didn't tell me her name, did you? Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and I love that fucking moment. I, I then, absolutely love that moment. Yeah, but I think that, that moment edit, was supposed to be the moment where you hear Thanos laughing in nowhere, and the whole world get, comes apart, and you realize that Thanos already fucking got the stone, and that was a beautiful thing. And in this one, I was just like, ah, oh, it fell flat for me. That twist. Oh, I'm see, like, I didn't need that twist. It hit it's real weird. good. That, that, I, that I, I like the twist again. It's just, yeah, I didn't enjoy the 
the performance of it. And I think it's just a weird thing of how they did all these things. Go ahead, Kevin. I was just going to say that, that was one of those points where the, like Sam Raimi's edit was fucking awesome of the, the whole shot of them walking was from the behind. And then once it's revealed, it cuts to the front shot and they're in opposite positions. And it's so like unnerving and uneasy. And like, it's so different because like everything, it just fits that, 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 um, the realization that happens so well. It was really cool. Tim Gettys. Oh, wait, What'd wait. I, I, no, no, no. Hold oh, on, shit, hold on. Sorry. I actually, I, <laughs> I, I know like, I'm going no, long. Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, no I mean, enjoy I, it, dude. I, Get I, in I there. Have, Roll around. The, the, the reason why I was like, I think initially I liked it, and now I'm coming in and I'm a lot hotter on it. I think the way they handled the multiverse stuff, it's fucking perfect. Like, they brought in two characters that we know into the multiverse, into another dimension that they could do whatever the fuck they want, and they, I feel like they significantly, like, there is a lot of character growth in the sense that, like, Wanda's murdering and fucking destroying people. And, and like, the character, Wanda the hero is so far gone. And, like, that is, I think, the coolest thing they can do with a multiverse. And then have those two characters come back. And now the weight of everything that's been done is, like, going to carry forward with Wanda if she survived the rubble, you know? And I think that's awesome. And I hope they, it, when we see the multiverse, I hope it's not often, but when we do, I hope that they do things like this. I hope that red smoke at the end when the crumble was just like yeah, a fart. Saved her, yeah, saved <laughs> her. Uh, Tim, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of right there with a little bit of what everyone's saying. And I think that that's kind of going to be the, the tenor of this movie going forward, where it's going to be divisive, but not in the ways that The Last Jedi is or something like that. I think that even the movie itself, like... I, I would be shocked if there's going to be many people out there that love everything about this movie. Like, I think that everyone's going to have like, I loved all this stuff, but I really didn't like that. I think that it might even be the complete opposite of, of other people, even in like similar groups and stuff. Um, I like Kev saw this movie twice and similarly to him, like it a lot more the second time than I did the first. Uh, but my pros and cons almost completely flipped uh, in a weird way. So I'm interested. I'm actually excited to see it a third time. Uh, and then kind of see really where I, I stand with it. Like, it's funny because I love this movie and enjoy the hell out of it. And we keep, like Greg was saying, like the entertainment value of this movie is impeccable. And he was talking about the pacing, like how fun it is. Like, I am just engaged the entire time. There's like no slow moments where I'm like, oh, now's when I should go to the bathroom. It's like every single moment, there's something going on that I am super invested in. I am not a Sam Raimi fan. And this movie did not change that for me. I am not a modern Danny Elfman fan. And this movie did not not change that for me but for some reason their combination and their commitment of like now fuck it this is gonna be danny elfman almost looney tunes like uh arranging this score that hints at some themes here and there sometimes to amazing degrees like the x-men 97 shit that we'll Ooh, get into later. was that a good one? Oh, so damn good or like the wandavision theme or like even little hints at uh wanda's more like the scarlet witch theme that that we get that stuff's cool but i'm with nick that I really wish they didn't just give up on one of the most iconic, great themes of the entire MCU with Doctor Strange, where we get hints of it in the beginning. And then I get that they want to do like, oh, it's corrupting. And towards the end, it's a little different. But I thought it was it ended up being a little bit more in service of Sam Raimi's wackiness as opposed to like carrying up carrying like themes and character development stuff. Uh, but it's weird because it's like almost every criticism I have of the movie on the flip side, there is something I, I really enjoyed about it. Like, I think that you guys are pretty spot on about like some of the characters feeling a little bit off, but I think that's just because it is campier and there is a different kind of style. I do think that at the end of the day, they did a good job of staying true to plot points that have been built up. Uh, I'm more on the side of Kevin with the, the Scarlet Witch stuff specifically because of Agatha as a character and us seeing her type of corruption as a witch um, and getting the black fingers and what a dark hold the dark hold does to you so that when we see the post credit thing in Wanda, I can totally fill in the gaps of how she got here in this. And I'm with Andy that I love the surprise and I love the commitment to Wanda being this ridiculous villain, this like Michael Myers esque villain throughout yeah. this entire movie. And, For me, and it's like the Terminator, right? Up. Yeah. Straight yeah. up, Especially man. With and that like, walk. Yeah. 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 And, and, and walking the whole, like the, the zombie version of it, right? From what if. Yeah, all that stuff's cool. The whole Illuminati scene obviously is fantastic. I think it's just, it's so well done and it, it's why I love the MCU so much. It's not just cameos for cameo's sake. I think they made, to Kevin's earlier point, like this is how you do multiverse, is 
set up an interesting thing that we kind of want to see happen. But then also, it's not about that. It's about Wanda. It's about Strange. It's about our main characters. And uh, even the more subtle moments of like her going in and killing all the Ultron bots, like similarly to how she did in Avengers Age of Ultron, which was her thrust into this world and all this stuff. Like there was a lot of really good kind of thematic things that they got going on there. And to have her brutally kill these characters that we know and love and Black Bolt um, is <laughs> really cool and, and so awesome. Graphic. And I love how they how they did that. And it's so funny where with this movie, there is so much bullshit in it. There's so much, there's the souls of the damned. And then there's the dream walking. And then there's the book of Ashanti. There's dream the dark hole. Cool and, the, <laughs> and my thing is any time it starts feeling overwhelming at all, they immediately just like, don't worry about it too hard because like, here's the answer. Like if you're confused, we're going to make it make sense in the next scene. And we're going to give you something fun to look at. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think that, the coolness and entertaining factor definitely override the quality factor of it all the musical mm. fight super fucking cool but it's just not motivated and it's hard for me to care about uh dope action choreography when i feel like the action isn't motivated by anything real like compare this to the first doctor strange movie every single fight scene action scene was based on using the dark dimension using the mirror dimension using the time stone to do cool loops and all this stuff whereas this it's like yeah it'd be cool if he fought using music and i'm like yeah i agree with you it's cool but yeah. why you know oh when he got and when he got knocked to the piano he saw the music and he's like this is a great way to it, fight <laughs> it would have been so much cooler because he, he has that vast history of music if he come like in the air composed a song and used the song and then the guy caught that like changed the notes you know the i think he kind of did that though like he was like the like the notes i'd be curious to see if the notes that played out on the on the paper or on the, on yeah. the sheet music how that corresponded to what we we're hearing and seeing because i thought that was just, kind of i thought they were trying to tie that in it just kind of sounded like <clears throat> random like yeah. someone playing with a piano and just mashing things and that's well, then the uh, evil doctor strange having like the evil music or whatever like, yeah okay yeah he's he's I'm, in on it too he's like i'll fight you you want to do it oh, this man. way fine and also nope. i had a garfield phone growing up and he throws a garfield phone I'm like, oh my god <laughs> no no tom cruise as tony Stark. i know Are right we, we're I, gonna like, get him i was not expecting to see fucking reed richards How goddamn cool was that jim halpert yeah i was, yeah, I was I, like that just always felt like a fever dream internet rumor thing not even mm -hmm. rumor just please hi you know get well, i'm already forgetting the actor's john name uh, john, krasinski. john krasinski um that that was really shocking and surprising and of course sure. we'd already been hinted the the uh, charles xavier moment but holy shit it delivered for me it was tenfold Carter. Like, oh, I, yeah. I know we've talked about that and we, you know, blah, blah, blah and what if and everything else. Like, I, w like, we had done the trailer breakdowns and all that shit. And, like, it, I, w we had thought we had seen Reed Richards and the four on the chest or whatever. And so I was like, I think that's actually going to happen. And I did not think that Captain Carter was going to be there. At least, uh, you know, Haley, what's her name? Uh, not Haley. Not uh, well. Not well. Not well. Thank you. I was hung up on Steinfeld. Um, yeah. Love that. Baron had a good question of, like, do you think they keep John Krasinski as uh mr Fra reed as Fran richards. reed richards and yeah. i i'm kind of like i have kind of two different sides of the arguments of like i don't think so this felt like just kind of a throwaway moment you got him here that's it this is sort of a almost like brad pitt in daredevil or a uh, deadpool type moment mm -hmm. it's just a stupid little like thing and they're all dead guess what but then the flip side of it i feel like I, I feel like if you don't cast him and you recast him with somebody else, then that's like a real big fuck you to everybody who's been wanting this uh, and willing this uh, cameo to actually happen in real life. And so I, I like I'm kind of like on both sides of it. So I, make I, a, let's make predictions. What are you saying, Andy? Make a choice. Make a call right now. John Krasinski is he Reed Richards in Fantastic Four? Yes, Kevin. I think he will be. Tim. I got. I have way too many thoughts to say yes or no on it. And I gotta say them because I'm Greg because I'm Tim Geddes and you're Greg Miller. Uh, I feel like it's a 50 50 kind of like what Andy's saying. I think that John Krasinski will be involved with Fantastic Four no matter what. I think he's either going to be director or play Reed or both. But I do think that no matter who is Reed, I think he will either be Reed or be the director or both. But I don't think he won't be involved in the project. Mm -hmm. I do think that it is either going to be him. Or they're going to go a more ultimate Fantastic Four route, which is cat they're way younger, uh, more of uh, Spider-Man in uh, No Way Home type age range. Um, and if they do that, obviously it won't be John Krasinski. So those are my thoughts. Nick, Nick. yes or no? 
Uh, the, the question really you should be posing is how many times can we get Patrick Stewart to get back in this role <laughs> and then die? <laughs> but, but because poor, poor Patrick Stewart just be, like he Not just keeps coming more. in for these hits. I'll also say you guys have like uh, one of the characters. Yes, I do think we, we keep him as. Uh, Thank as you. I say no. I, I say no. He will not be Mr. Fantastic and Fast Fantastic Four. Nick, go ahead. I think it would be a missed a missed opportunity because I think he did a pretty good role. One of the things like the, the council itself, I thought was not well done. I'll disagree with you guys a little bit. I didn't like it. I thought it was kind of um, a little bit on the nose and kind of. I don't know. I just I, I I saw in the trailer. I was like, this is gonna be really cool, and then played out with him, them talking with that little weird moat, which it turns out was just like five feet down. Was weird. But when they started fighting, I was like, oh, this is cool. This is this gets me this gets me going. And John Krasinski kind of stepping in and being like the leader, and being like, stop, let's talk about this. I thought was really good. And then having his head pop was fucking ultra violent. But one of the, the people that I was surprised to see, even though I'm pretty sure we saw her in the trailer, was Lashana Lynch as Captain Marvel. I thought was fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. And they keep. They keep putting her in, teasing these things, it, her in movies to me. Like, I thought she was going to be the new 007. And spoiler, <laughs> she's not. And I'm like, fucking let her be the lead, for Christ's sake. She's awesome. Let her be Captain Marvel. Let her be the next 007, for Christ's sake. Well, she's dead now in, in the MCU. She got <laughs> cancer and died. No, I mean, it's true during yeah, the blip, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's true. It's that's unfortunate. True. Multiverse yeah. thing. Yeah, but uh, last thing I want to say is as a fan of – as a mega fan of the MCU, I think this movie did a fantastic job of giving me things to think about and theorize on and mm -hmm. question and look into. And I – it's hey, it's messy, man. This multiverse stuff, like the moment you introduce time travel to anything, it's going to get messy. Then you add on multiverse and then you just commit on to all of it. It's going to start making less and less sense. And that is very unfortunate and is a bummer and it's not an excuse for anything. But I do think – that in this movie, the way that they handled it, setting up incursions, this idea of what that is, I think is finally starting to contextualize what the multiverse is in the MCU and how What If and No Way Home and WandaVision to an extent and Loki and all this stuff. With this movie, it's all starting to be a thing of like, yes, they all are slightly different. And that is kind of the point. Now we're going to kind of bring it into there's this overarching story that we're, we're building to and getting the ideas of Doctor Strange being this threat in all the universe universes and then killing him uh and, and th the whole Thanos story like the whole Illuminati thing I thought was so cool and really starts to call into question uh old things that we knew as fact before which I think is always one of my favorite things about the MCU of Doctor Strange being like this it's the only way and I think with this movie there's a, enough elements like building up to question was that the only way or was that just the way that Strange lives and Strange needed to live because if you think about the first movie uh, the ancient one says you can only see your future till the moment you die. So when Strange sits there looking at 14 million different futures, he's only seeing up till his death. So he's choosing ones where he lives, which is inherently biased, right? So it's like him doing that is and letting Tony sacrifice himself. I love that they're kind of hinting at dealing with that. So um, yeah. I thought that stuff was cool. Confirming this was 616 is not my favorite move. Like I 616 should be the comic universe. This should be a different number, but it is. We're but, getting these numbers and getting all that stuff. And I think that it's it's very cool to just dream that maybe this uh, Earth, what is it, 838, that we saw the Illuminati, Illuminati verse is the X-Men animated show universe from the 90s. And I fucking badass. love that so much because when uh, Professor X comes out, he's wearing the exact same green suit he does in the cartoon, the same exact blue striped tie. They play the music, the man. Oh my the God. hover chairs, the same exact yellow one. And in the credits of this movie, the music is credited as X-Men 97 theme. X-Men 97 so is the cool. upcoming show. Like the original was X-Men 91 through 96 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's like fucking so cool that that show might be canon in the Illuminati universe. But Kevin Coelho? I was going to say, uh, damn, like you, you like got me off track. But I, can you imagine if 97 starts with being like Xavier got murdered? The Ill Illuminati is pretty much all dead. Like the X Men have there to, to say step it's up. picking right up though from the animated where the animated series left off. That, I mean, yeah, but it left off in a weird way where he was like, "I'm going to space. We'll see you guys later." I forget you know? what happened to Morph. Where was Morph at the end of that? Morph. Uh, I think question. he went. He went all crazy because he was Thank a zombie. You, you know. No problem. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Before, uh, yeah, sorry. Whatever yeah. my last thought was, I've lost it. Go ahead. We'll find it somewhere, I'm sure. But before we get to the plot, let me tell you about our sponsors. Shout out to Babbel for sponsoring this episode. For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers. Definitely not me. I took Spanish, didn't do well in it the first time, did okay the second time. You know what? 
we'll move on. Now, thanks to Babbel, a language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Greg Miller has been learning French little by little, and now when he goes back home to, to Canada to see Jen's family, he'll be able to communicate better. Isn't that a lovely situation? Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language language on the go. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. Right now, you can save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash kind of funny. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash kind of funny for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. One more time, babbel.com slash kind of funny. Shout out to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like walking your dog in public without securing them on a leash. Most of the time, you'll probably be fine. But what if one day your dog runs away or gets dog napped? It's better to be careful, especially when it's as simple as using ExpressVPN. We've been using ExpressVPN here at Kind of Funny for years now. Me personally, I've been using it and I know that my internet browsing is secure. It just gives me that peace of mind that I need. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network in cafes, hotels, airports, your online data is not secure, but ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so they can't, and it's great. I use it on my desktop. I use it on my phone. I use it everywhere that I use the internet. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. You can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash kind of funny. That's expressvpn.com slash kind of funny. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V vpn.com slash kind of funny. Shout out to Chime for sponsoring this episode. No one likes waiting on a paycheck, especially when you've got bills due. Good thing there's Chime. Now you can get your paycheck up to two days early with direct deposit. That's up to two more days to save, pay bills, and generally just feel good about your money situation. But Chime is more than just about getting paid early. It's also an award-winning mobile app, checking account, debit card, and optional savings account. So what are you waiting for? Hopefully not your paycheck. You can get started with Chime today. Applying for a free account takes less than two minutes you can get started at chime.com slash kf games that's chime.com slash kf games chime.com slash kf games banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp bank or stride bank na members fdic early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer andy cortez hit it greg is gonna say the plot greg is gonna say the plot Craig is gonna say the plot. It's time for the plot. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. You get the traditional Marvel opening. It's good to see it on the big screen again. And then you go, where are we gonna start? Well, we're gonna start with Doctor Strange with a ponytail running around some weird ass dimension with the one, the only American Chavez. And as they run, or America Chavez. And as they run and do all their stuff, there's this thing chasing them, and it looks like it's like, well, it's all like lava monstery looking, and they're screaming and they're doing the thing, and they're trying to get to some book in the center of the room. It looks so like a Harry Potter kid. monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got like the mummy wrapped. You know? he looks like he's from yeah. Mummy. yeah, I was watching some videos saying that um, they they look a lot like the God. What is it? The it's like the wraps of Setadar or something like that. And it's the, what gives the power. Tape. The fucking tape yeah, shit. but it it gives yeah. power to uh, the juggernaut. Like that's oh, the, yeah. That, oh. The, which is cool. Cool. Juggernaut and bitch. so they run to this book or whatever, and then they get over there, and then, like, you know, Shut it grabs America, America, and then it's got her, and then he's there, and then Doctor Strange's like, I gotta just fucking kill you and take your power because I need it, and this is the only way. And she's like, no, don't do that. And then he gets stabbed by the big monster with the tapes or whatever, and he's like, oh, I'm a lay. And then she gets all wrapped up, and she's getting, like, uh, spread eagle pulled apart over there, and that looks painful. Like that. And then she's close to the book, too. And then, uh, you know, she opens up a little star portal behind her, which is her way to get through the multiverse we'll find out soon and then you know uh doc strange with a ponytail throws a bunch of his little discs out there and he cuts all the wraps and she falls into the thing and she goes doo, 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 and she's off the thing and then uh doc strange gets killed or whatever but then our doctor strange wakes up in his bed he's going, wow he's like whoa i had a bad dream you know what's up man and he's, he's shirtless out too were they born born in labs now it's time to win those labs 
What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a podcast within a podcast. Rank those abs here for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Thank Andy, you. we're going to start with you. How do we feel about the definition of Benedict Cumberbatch is abs in this particular film? I mean, I'm just wondering what amount of stress levels was he under during this dream mm. that it looked like he had just left Planet Fitness after like a three hour <laughs> pump. You know what I mean? Well, when you sweat a lot, Andy, that's where you get that definition. Uh, gotcha. At least that's what people at my gym tell me. That's why I always, mm. I'm always wearing a sweatsuit just underneath uh, my clothing. Wow. Uh, okay. I thought he looked great. I thought Benedict Cumberbatch, great shape. Not not throwing it in your face though, Greg. Not not Tom Holland in it where it's like, above look Tom at this Holland. eight pack. Yeah. I put him I put him a little bit below Tom Holland. Well, maybe we'll put we'll put him above Tom Holland just for the fact that he has humility. And that wow. is ranked those apps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you for contributing. Just before we move on to the the core universe stuff, I want to just kind of talk about this, the opening scene of this movie. I love that they just throw you straight into the action and like move things really quickly of just like having Strange die, Strange up try to kill America, and then introduce us to the idea of her punching for the uh, through the multiverse and stuff. Love the visual design of it. Love the sound design of it. I thought that shit was rad. But I do think that there was something lacking about the opening of this movie. Like the Marvel Studios logo into just starting like this. Like it, it felt like, especially with Sam Raimi and his style, I almost expected to get a type of like grand opening credits type thing to like set the stage. And like, I again, uh, this movie is a giant contradiction to me where it's like I appreciate things I don't like and I don't like things. That, you know what I mean? It's just like such a mess where I enjoy that they threw us into it, but I, I it felt a little off to me. I, I'll tell uh, you agreed. what I needed. I needed Doctor Strange to do. You, do you know who I am? You don't know me. My name is Doctor <laughs> Stephen know, Strange. Do. You don't even know anything about my life. <laughs> my life is not the fiend of heart. Strange. I will uh, say also, it was very shocking to yes. not get a Morbius trailer in be the beginning of this movie. Oh, uh, shocking, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the new world. <laughs> yeah. I um I I want to put just talk about the visuals for a second of like all his magic being white and like immediately being like, oh man, like the like deep whatever science that that motivates the mcu or you know moves things the color like, science yeah. affects that well i mean you know he's pulling energy from another dimension and in this dimension the one he pulls from is white instead of the orange i, I yeah. just think that's cool and a little Very added cool. detail that gets thrown out there i also don't love america's just like perfectly on the nose star portal i yeah. i wish it i it's wish it crest i wish it was like really messy and like still somehow resembled mm -hmm. the star but the fact that yeah. it's like a perfect star i, I didn't that love was a little that. weird yeah, yeah. A, lot a lot of star a lot of stars yeah. it star looks super yeah. comic star like i was saying and yeah. i think that's one of those things where it's like oh okay i feel like i don't know i at the like I, mcu did such a great job for 10 years right of building up to they're fighting a purple alien and this all makes sense and feels real to me whereas yeah the star being perfectly punched i was like eh, I just yeah don't. yeah and you're right it does feel super comic booky and i feel like it's one of those things that you see the comic book and you go, how will this look in the movie? Yeah. And I would just was not expecting that thing to look just like a perfect little cutout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Punch, a whole punch. Uh, Doc Strange, though, he wakes up and he's got fucking jacked out, yacked out abs, right? And he's like, whoa, that was a bad dream, but I got to get ready. So he starts getting all dressed up and he puts on his watch and then he goes to the mirror and does a whoop -a whoop and the tie ties itself. And they're like, man, he's getting Magic. dolled up to go talk to Wong about something stupid, but he's not going to talk to Wong about something stupid. He's going to go to Christine Palmer's wedding. That's right, everybody. And so he goes in there and he sits down at the wedding and everybody's, you see, a couple of like, oh, that's Dr. Strange. Holy shit, man. Are we going to fucking die? Are we going to fucking die? Because there's an Avenger here. Usually when people, Avengers go places, <laughs> other uh, we kind of people die all the time. They're like, nah, I'm sure we won't die this time. Don't worry. And then what happens? Nick West, Dr. D Nick West comes in, sits down, and he is still fucking broken from the five years of dust people. You know what I mean? Or just his life falling apart, his brother dying, his cat's dying while he was gone. Not in that order. Yeah, yeah, fantastic yeah, yeah. scene. Great. Yeah, not too much comedy in this movie, but I think yeah. that for the most part, whenever there is, it at least got a giggle out of me. I feel like I feel like this movie got the intended reactions emotionally out of me when mm -hmm. it was trying with everything except for anything sentimental at all, because any of that stuff just straight up didn't work for me. I, I feel like the Bruce Campbell stuff was like, oh, like you don't have to include this kind of comedy in here. 
we'll get uh, to I didn't it. like that. I, I, it just yeah. went on too long. Yeah, yeah totally. Too long. Long. Yeah. If I were getting to it now, yeah, no, totally. It's that thing where it's like, you know, I, I love Bruce Campbell, obviously, personal sure. friend of mine. You can go see on Instagram us hanging out, TikTok us personal making fun friend. of each other, personal friend. I could talk to him right now if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Don't ask me to. Um, but it's that <laughs> idea of like, right, like I love the homage to Evil Dead, the Evil Dead series, but Evil Dead 2, right, where he fights his own hand and chops his hand off and stuff. I was like, oh, that's a really cute thing. But yeah, it just goes on and on. And then even when Doctor Strange like, it's going to go on for three weeks. I was like, all right. You know what I mean? And then the ending of it and then yelling out of the camera, it's over. I'm like, yeah, all right. You know what I mean? Like, blah. But I again, it's Sam Raimi. You, we, know, we, we know what we were getting when we gave this man who made two great Spider-Man films this thing. Two great yeah. Spider-Man. Don't listen to Spider-Man interview. Mm, um, anyways, though, I wish Nick wasn't shitting his brains out right now because I'd love to have his opinion on uh, wigging out with uh, Dr. Nick West here, but it doesn't matter. Uh, West is there, says all this stuff, uh, you know, puts Dr. Strange in a weird place. He's like, Ooh, but then the starts and like, you know, she starts fucking bebopping down the aisle and it looks and it's Christine. She's come down the aisle. She <laughs> she's bebopping. She's like, she's walking in like D Lo Brown. <laughs> 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 Coming to the ring, having a great time. Uh, then you know she gets married. Uh, it's the after party. Then Doctor Strange have, has having martinis with a lemon twist, having a great time out there. Um, while he's sitting there trying to get another one, uh, Christine comes up to get a glass of red wine. He does the old Jesus trick, turns her water into wine, two on Pretty the cool. nose. Ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, then in just the most inappropriate fashion of all Very fucking time. At her goddamn wedding, she's been married for all of ten minutes. He's like, you know, Christine, I time you know, and I, place. Yeah, blah blah. So like, rude. Jesus. So rude. So he's talking about how yeah he loved her or whatever, but like you know he missed it. But it was always this. Then she has some great line to shut him down. What was it? I forget. You always have uh, to be holding the knife. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I like that. Or like, wow, you've been yeah. thinking about that. How long you been holding on to that how, one? In the chamber. Yeah. How long has that been in the chamber? <laughs> good one. That's a good one. Right yeah, there. that was. Uh, uh, yeah. I did want to point out that I, I assume that Stephen Strange has been using his sorcery magic to um make that hairline so strong so is it a wig i don't know wigging now with scarpino 100 percent, that's a wig <laughs> that thing is so i didn't think it was it's just it's a dead bad. fucking marmot on his is head it? and i don't understand why they need to do that to him just let him have his hairline and dye it black it's so I, weird I, it's not that I like it's so distracting. i don't mind it being a wig it's just that like we need to advance it in a way to where you might have a couple of stray hairs in front of where the overall hairline is, but it is just like it is. It is. It is, it is, it is, it is right now. Where it is just hair. one line. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 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 not. It's way too defined. I, I do not defined. like it. And no. I don't remember it being that bad the first one. Me either. Now, Nick, what about the ponytail iteration of Strange? Like, did that get you going in any way? Listen, guys, oh, if yeah. you're gonna if you're gonna tell me that you're gonna shave the sides of your hair, grow a Steven Seagal ponytail out because you don't have the patience in high school to grow the sides out because that's really really hard, I'm not gonna fault you for that. In fact, I find no fault with that whatsoever. Wow, <laughs> you got a no nice. fault, ladies and gentlemen. That's a no Very fault. Your referee, Nick <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so the wedding's having a great time. Everybody's bebopping around, and then what do they hear? Some screams outside because they're in New York. And so Doctor Strange walks out, or he's already on the balcony, I guess, at this point, and he looks out there, and what does he see? Cars and shit flying down the road. He's like, I gotta do some superhero -y shit, and he jumps off, and he does a little boo -boo, and he turns his, yeah. his uh, and his whole outfit turns into his outfit. You're he, like, that's fucking cool. Shout outs to every time he turns from a normal outfit which i think it only happens like twice maybe three times into his doctor strange outfit because did you guys notice that it was his pocket square yeah he always has a little his, red thing and yeah and he, it, yeah. that's what he and tosses the other one out oh scarf. i didn't even picture yeah. that I didn't, yeah, yeah and that's, that's cool. so fucking cool it's cool at the, yeah, While at the we're very talking end about... he was wearing that red scarf and he takes yeah. it yeah. and it turns into a cloak and we, we saw him do similar things in uh, uh, No Way Home as well. But, like, it's funny now, uh, having seen this movie, knowing exactly what goes on, that the whole the sanctum is filled with ice and stuff was just a weird one-off thing in No Way Home. And it was just like, okay, that was just a, a choice they made that made the production design a lot more resource heavy but okay i guess that was just a fun one-off joke thing oh, i'm surprised we didn't get any tie into that at all in this movie but continue greg uh he goes down there and what does he find a bus being held up in the air by nothing and he's like what he, there's a girl screaming and she got on the bus he's like what and so he goes boop, 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 
woo and does this thing and it goes and he can see into the invisible cool. uh, ob- octopus that there's a giant one-eyed octopus uh, there tearing up the bus or whatever and he deconstructs the bus and America is there and she falls and then he starts fighting the uh, octopus and now they're fighting they're rolling around in New York they're fighting doing stuff and then like Wong shows up and he's like I'm a sorcerer supreme it's, you should bow or whatever and that's a funny joke that will now be ongoing throughout the movie and they all fight for a while and they're fighting the octopus and at one point the octopus crawls up the side of the building and this is like directly pulled from the Doc Ock. It looks like the same fucking building that Doc mm-hmm. Ock and Spider Man fought on with the same thing of like the close up on the lady with the sunglasses looking out at the giant octopus or whatever. And you're like, damn, Sam Raimi, we get it. You made this fucking movie. Shit, fuck. And you made Spider Man too. Good movie. I it's thought the cool action here was though, awesome. Yeah. I thought this whole sure. sequence yeah, was fun, fun as hell. Yeah. It's a good, I, definitely more entertaining than the, the intro action sequence. They, I mm-hmm. feel like every sort of piece here. Uh, again, I'm always just a fan of when directors and filmmakers can get really creative with how they portray uh, on-screen violence, I guess, for lack of a better word. Sure. And I thought all of the powers that he utilized, that sort of floating hands to throw up the spear, there was just a lot of really cool shit happening in this. Scene. I like that. I had a lot of fun with it. I like the 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 saw blade sound effect yeah, as the yeah. bus is coming at him and it cuts it in two. I thought that was yeah. really cool. What, I mean, one of the things I keep wondering though, and this is more of a question for Tim, I guess, and Kevin, because you guys are a little bit more nerds when it comes to comic books. How come yeah. nobody's anywhere close to as powerful as Tilda Swinton? How come the how come the Sorcerer Supreme? She's really I, old. I, and she pulled from the Dark Dimension. Uh, well, that that, that kept her alive. I mean, I I think I, I would assume Strange is on the same level. As it her. just seems like every time, like if you go back and watch the first one, she just has no problem fucking everyone up. Well, but and you like have to remember, cool shit. like the enemy she's fighting is just a more powerful wizard, right? And, and like not more powerful than her, but like more powerful than Strange. Fair. The reason why Strange has so much problems there is he's way like he's way lower skilled than. Uh, you just started. That one guy, yeah, exactly. Mordo, Kaecilius. No, Kaecilius. Oh, yeah. Great oh. name, best name in movie history. Yeah, it's interesting. I think this movie kind of tries to explain that a little bit, even with the idea that there's uh, the book that you only get to learn the spells of if you're Sorcerer Supreme. So it's like mm-hmm. uh, Doctor Strange is kind of like being limited on certain things just inherently, right? Where she was Sorcerer Supreme, so she has access to all this other stuff. Um, and Wong, being a newer Sorcerer Supreme, isn't as advanced well, or whatever. I mean, but... Wong is not a newer Sorcerer Supreme. I, I mean, he's been a Sorcerer Supreme for five plus years, five plus right? Years. But wasn't wasn't Steven the Sorcerer Supreme? Like in yeah, between but he the... was when he was blipped. Wong. Yeah, so, but Wong I'm saying there over. was a time before that and after uh, Doctor Strange one, right? See, that's the thing is I don't know that they ever officially gave him that title in the movies, right? He was the gatekeeper of the uh, yeah, he uh, was the Sanctum, head of the right? New York Sanctum, yeah. But like I, I don't remember even having just watched the last movie and I stuff. I, right. I don't know if they ever officially made it. I feel like this kind of makes it seem like it's not. But I don't know. But I do think it's a really wise call for them to have Wong be the Sorcerer Supreme. And I, I'm just saying it now. Wong and Strange is like probably my favorite modern team up that we have with them. Like every time that they have the back and forths, I love it. I love it's the great. dynamic that they have and and like the bowing stuff Greg's talking about like at the end when when Steven bows to him but even before that when uh Wong looks up and sees this fucking zombie and goes oh strange it's like yeah. I fucking, he's like I don't want to know don't tell me yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I I love that stuff and and seeing Wong here getting his own theme for the first time I guarantee they're never going to use it again um but him coming in and pulling the swords out and fighting the 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 squid thing which is is not Shuma Gorath I know all you keen eyed views are out yeah. there like I've played Marvel versus Capcom too I know who that is. Uh, the Lego set has confirmed that it's Gargantos is the name of that thing. It is. Um, so not, so but not I, I do. It's, huh? Sorry, go ahead. So not Starro? It was not Starro. No, no, he no. said Sabaro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I do think it was cool at like, getting these different like mystical creatures. The creature design in this movie I thought was like really top tier. And I like the reveal that it was Wanda that was kind of sending them after america to, to chase her like yeah. it, this movie is surprisingly simple plot wise like mm-hmm. for a movie that it, multiverse of madness and how crazy it all is it's like it's very just from this thing to this thing to this thing like no b plot really so thought that was cool uh, continue with quick, that just, Greg. Real, real quick I, I i pulled up an article um that is saying like a couple of interviews are saying that before infinity war he was the source of supreme so for like the director so interesting. I'll take that if you will. Well, there you go. If he won, he got he it, and then they were like, "You need to go help the Avengers." And he's like, "Okay, I'll be back." And then he never came back. 
I'll, I'll do the reading when I get home. He said, but he, <laughs> he never came home. You know what I mean? So the dog the still sitting yeah. the door. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, they uh, they're fighting the octopus, and then eventually they kill the octopus in a disgusting way of yanking his fucking eye out with a giant spear fucking or whatever. And it's oh, intense. Awesome. And it was cool yeah. how they all worked together yeah. to do it, right? Because like the cape flew over there to distract the eye, and then he got it and blew and this sucked out. Like, but he does it. And then, you know, uh, America gets confronted and then she steals the sling ring and she runs, but then they catch up to her really quick and they get her and then they take her out for pizza. And she's like, hey, I'm from another dimension. I can travel the multiverse, but I can't control it. And that sucks. And he's like, I don't know if I believe you. And she's like, but I saw, and he's like, I saw you in a dream. She's like, that wasn't a dream. That's what happens when you dream and you see other stuff. You're actually seeing the other versions of you across the multiverse. It's called, you know, this is what it was. So you saw it in this dream walking. This dream going on. And he's like, oh shit, fuck. That's, that's crazy. Pizza's good. And she's like, yeah, pizza's good. Fucking walk so, coming up here and being like, oh, so the clown chasing me when I'm naked? She's like, somewhere yeah. it's happening. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. 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 And so this leads them to then go find Ponytail Strange's body that came through the star as well. Uh, they Wait, find that like, oof, that's fucked up. Yeah. I just think it's so funny that Doctor Strange is like, I need proof. And it's like, all right, first of all, you should be able to suss that out somehow. Like you're master of the mystic arts sort it out like check her whatever it is and second of all like i need proof thank god she had a corpse <laughs> his corpse specifically you know what i mean yeah, but he mm-hmm. saw it all kev you know what i mean he saw it all, saw it well, all i kev. know so but like if someone tells you hey this is what happened in your dream last night and it was real like i don't know that i'm gonna be like i need proof as much as i'm gonna be like all right let me let me try to verify that yeah I mean, they just want to go from a strong 97 to 100 percent, and that sure. was it you know what sure. I mean? <laughs> okay that was it and so like shit that is a dead body all right cool we'll bury it up here in new york just on this guy's roof and they're like that's gonna violate some codes or whatever and it's like haha it will violate some codes or whatever and then he's like all right you know what you're going back to commertage and while you go to commertage i'm gonna go investigate the only person i know who knows this kind of fucking because he's like this isn't uh magic right this is witchcraft which is cool and he's like all right, cool. I'm gonna go. Do you know anybody who knows witchcraft he's like i just so happen to she calls herself scarlet witch now so i'm gonna go do that and so, woof, you go over there now, right? And what we do is we get them like a very Wanda Vision y thing, right? Where it's Wanda and the kids bopping around, no vision, bopping around a house, having a great time or whatever, eating ice cream, having a great time, just fucking being mom and kids. That's great. And then, boom, Wanda wakes up because she was dreamwalking. She wakes up, right? And no she, longer oh, be bopping around. Not be bopping mm-hmm. around. Now she's super mm-hmm. sad. All the colors leaves the screen. It's super sad and moves around. She's out in this fucking cabin, surrounded by these these trees with blossoms. We're gonna call them cherry blossoms. They're not cherry blossoms, but I'm no, calling them cherry apple blossoms. blossoms. Kevin, they're sure. apple blossoms. Apple blossoms. Apple blossoms. Apple blossoms. Um, Boots mm-hmm. with the fur. <laughs> I, I, I feel like another. Come on, guys. Come on, let's focus. I, I, I they don't enough. fucking make them like that, everybody. <laughs> really Take really really your don't. Doja Cat and that girl with the stickers okay. all over her face singing about her breakups and throw that <laughs> shit out and bring this music back. I, I want to just shout outs to the acting in this scene and like the use of silence and how like strong that shift was from her waking up to suddenly being in this what feels like a really empty lonely room like good just great olivia job rodrigo conveying. that's her name i didn't even have to look it up it got okay. there right. yeah yeah just saying, like, elizabeth olsen everything yeah what did fantastic as having to play the the multiple versions the depressed one the angry one the witch the this the that i thought it was great love the switch with the wandavision theme like i love that we're for the first time ever getting the importance of the tv shows in the actual movies and it's just it's so damn cool to see and i love i was saying this earlier that one of my favorite things about this movie is like anytime i'm asking a question it immediately answers it where i'm sitting here like what what's going on like why are, is she still in the sitcom world and then oh it's a dream immediately mm-hmm. and she is doing the whole sleepwalking dark hole shit we saw at the end of uh in the post credits of wandavision i'm like damn we're we're strapping in because like that was the first hand where I'm like, she's about to be the fucking villain. And to Andy's point, didn't expect it this soon. Yeah, I, I appreciated like, you know, pretty soon after this, I was like, damn, they've kind of shown everything they showed in trailers. Like, I really don't know what's coming out other than Illuminati, of course, but I got what's going on. That was nice. Anyways, though, she wakes up and goes out to her apple blossoms jeans and starts like touching the trees and rubbing the trees. And then there's some sheep over there and they're doing sheep things or whatever. And then Dr. Ah. Stephen Strange shows up and he's like, 
well, this looks pretty, re- this almost looks, re- this looks pretty real. It's like in Israel, it's like, oh, fool. okay, cool. And then it was the whole thing at like Westview. Like, I didn't, you know, I know you'd, you'd come eventually. I didn't fucking mean to. All right, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm not even here my for that. Bad. Don't worry about it. Look, yeah. my bad. Okay. It's like, oh, don't worry. That's totally chill. Nobody, we don't care about these peons we call earthlings. Uh, anyways, though, I got this one girl. She's from a different dimension. She's saying that a monster chased her, that somebody sent after her to get her powers or whatever. What do you know about the multiverse or whatever? She's like, oh, Vision had his theories or whatever, and yada, yada, yada. And they start walking and talking she's like you know what why don't you just you know bring america here and then i could help and then steven stops walking that like, great and just like you didn't tell me your name did you and he's like no i didn't and then she lays it all out right that you know her kids are out there somewhere her children are out there you never had kids i had kids the kids are out there i need to go get them i need to go save them yeah tim uh just uh while we're in this scene like the the lead into it where they're talking about the multiverse stuff with america and then even this this wanda thing is the first example of many throughout the movie uh the mcu when we talk about it starting to get messy and like the inconsistencies of following the other movies and shows and stuff like the the way that they kind of hand wave out no way home like the biggest multiverse movie we've had so far and it's just like because of the weird licensing situation with uh uh sony it's like literally they're just like yeah do you have experience with the multiverse he's like yeah there was a thing with spider-man and like that's all like that movie could have just not happened and it wouldn't really have affected does he shoot web out of his butt <laughs> no yeah like, so. the yeah, jokes are so funny wrong. but yeah it was just funny that they just totally wrote that out and then the other thing is like vision right like they reference him here but it is kind of weird that they treat her like a single parent for yeah. the rest of the movie and it's like i i wonder that I, there's it can be easily explained of like yeah. why that's the case of vision dies in all the other universes right. and that just is what it is but i i think it's a little weird that when we're talking about her trying to find the universe where she's happiest yep. that this yep. wanda that we know is not finding one where vision is also part of it mm-hmm. so i just think that that's weird where every single time we see all the the orbs of the universes it's just her and her kids when we know how much she cares about vision not just from the movies we see but the entire wandavision show I digress. I, I I'm right there with say, you where I thought it was peculiar and I thought in the final confrontation, maybe like when, you know, it was her, which version of invading the house with regular Wanda there, I thought maybe Vision was going to come downstairs or whatever in her sorry, kind of at this moment. Especially when we know there is the white Vision out there. Yeah. So Vision with memories, with all that stuff does exist. Agree. I, I wouldn't be shocked if the, the reasoning behind that is that like she's, finding universes where the creation of them like is the same just the outcome is different somehow she made them like physical and able to leave the hex in which case yeah like, this is another one i'm sorry i'm sorry kevin i cut you off that's rude no I, I, i'm just saying like i i feel like that's an easy enough like uh thing for me to understand of like okay she's just following that timeline through to like ch- just changing keeping them alive it's that thing where like there's infinite universes so she's looking for a very specific universe I, like again this is what we're talking about with the gap between the show and the movie right where i can fill it in i can do the work right where i can say like infinite universes she's looking for universes where she is the mom and there is no vision why well vision talked her out of this before right even in her own created world assumedly a vision you'd run into in any of these universes would also be like wanda this is madness knock it off whereas if she can get to one and also i guess technically right in the universe we're talking about where she's going to get these kids with the Wanda Maximoff in it, this is one where Ultron worked, so there never was a vision in this one, which then how does she get the kids? Who really knows? But this is, again, part of the criteria for what she's looking for as she goes through and checks all the boxes. She's yeah. trying to find one that, you know, she could do this and get away with it and not have the love of her life tell her to fuck off. Anyways, I digress. I didn't tell you her name. No, you didn't. This is going to happen. Listen, she turns the whole world red. It's all fucked up. And you've been using the dark hold because she's got those sticky Cheeto fingers. And she's like, yeah, I have. But it's also showing me a bunch of shit. And it's really cool or whatever. You saw the fucking movie, you know. And so then it's like, you listen, what's going to go down is I've been very reasonable. And so you get, you go home, you get pack your little bag of commertage, and I'm going to show up at fucking sundown. And I'm going to take her and I'm going to, she's going to come with me. And what if you don't? Oh, well, you don't want to know. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry kind of shit. And Doc Strange's like, Woo! Who opens the portal goes through he's like we're fucked we gotta you we're fucked like get everybody here get everybody here yeah i remember that it was terrible I, that's the first time she calls herself scarlet witch to him right yeah 
Because, like, when he comes back, he's like, bro, she's calling herself Scarlet Witch. Fox. Everything's <laughs> fucked. Yeah, it's so cool. It's, it's a very much like Michael yeah. Scott. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and so Wong's like, you're everybody. We need everybody. Sorcerers and shit. Uh, fucking get up here with your goddamn platters. And he, they're like, Wah. they're making shit. And then one bull guy's there. Like, all right, cool, bull guy. I, yeah, that's you know weird. I mean? There's no explanation hey. at all. Like, it's Show just a bull, fucking- man respect to rintra okay the minute he got a he got a he got a he was credited like with a photo and everything yeah, <laughs> yeah i know right yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so like, weird did they credit the the illuminati i don't think they did unless <laughs> i was like looking at my phone for a second like i don't think patrick stewart and them got like a name face thing no, but so. rintra sure did yeah <laughs> so they did, weird. I think, oh yeah, shit the hell's going on? Here? Oh, it's Voldemort. Right, it's, it's my Voldemort overlay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, all that happened. And like, I if I and then like battle stations get everybody here for sundown and shit. She's gonna, it's gonna pop off. And so they start bringing people out of portals and shit. And I'd be lying if I was like, man, I hope Ned comes out of one. You know what I mean? Like I was like, just a little bit, little Ned in training with his sling ring or whatever. But whatever. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. Back, right? Instead, we get a fucking bull and a bunch of weirdos we don't know or whatever. And like you're like, man, they are really just padding this for a body count, huh? That's great. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Clearly, they don't want to kill anybody major. God forbid they make Wong's death mean anything. He'll just, he'll get his neck almost broken like 15 times in this movie. It'd be fine. Great. Cool. Awesome. Magic, uh, protection ma- spells. Magical neck, yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Anyways, I, uh, so why yeah, – don't get me started. Anyways, uh, it's sundown happens or what? whatever. There's no problem with that at all. They're all there with – I mean, like, just – it's I. are there stakes for Wong? Should I ever be afraid for Wong? Like, no, why should I care? No, no. I mean, I mean but yeah. his friends, any of his friends, like, you saw that lady – who did they have something going on? I feel like yeah, they might have had something going on. Yeah, a little something, something. And she that was, that was fucking a little inappropriate business work yeah. relationship happening there. She, she utterly sacrificed herself for him, Holy and that fuck. like, ugh, that was an intense was cool scene. Visual. I like what she. Yeah, yeah it would have been cool if maybe Wong did it himself to die a hero instead of being a little bitch who two seconds later does like I'll stop you right now. Somebody shows Wong up with beats they, your have, ass. they have yeah. the fucking dark hole. They're gonna destroy the multiverse, yada yada. And then I'm like, I'm not giving you shit about where the other copy of the multiverse is and they bring out any of you i'm like fucking fillet andy in front of yeah, me I, andy, well, i'm right, sorry i like, gotta protect the multiverse but like, and, andy can just sit there and scream and scream Greg. for hours and hours and i'll let it happen i'm not giving up the multiverse but they happens- literally pick up fucking four jabronis and the bull and they're like we're gonna hurt them and they're like all right all right all right so I'll stop. These four motherfuckers you've never seen before or care about matter more than the multiple. The bull was there. We love him. That's Billy of the Minotaur. What was They're just trying to sell me another That's fucking right, bull toy, all right? Billy, I don't Billy need that bull. Funko Pop. I don't need it at all. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Marty Wong. The Minotaur. Do something. You're hilarious, and I love you, Wong, but I want, you know what I mean? I, let it matter. Like, like, I know matter. I know that you're lowest on this movie, but don't you just want to watch Wong beat the fuck out of Greg right now? Like just the, taking the, the town. This is another one of those things where like I mean, I, I don't I don't know if we're getting one ever, but I would love to have Wong have his own movie. I, I think he's a great character. I, I think Benedict Wong is a fucking great actor. I love their back and forth. Yeah. And I just I love Wong, don't go wrong. Yeah, I don't know why Greg wants him he to die. He was great so in Deadly badly. Class. Everybody should watch not Deadly anymore. Class. It's, you know, not coming yeah. back, sadly, because nobody watched it at the time, but he was great in it. Anyways. Uh, real, quick, I'll real say, quick. I don't love this camera tosh fight. No, oh, I like I think it. it looks weird and it's very, very bright for some there reason. It, it looks like it's toy it was filmed you can in the void and I just don't I don't love the way it looked compared to the original the, the shots in the original one. It just looks really small. I always thought that I was like camera tosh really? was big. And it looked like it was a tiny little gaz- like a little patio on top of a building. <laughs> I was like, that's right, that's hella funny because I had the opposite thing where I always thought camera tosh was some remote little like temple on top of a mountain. I didn't realize that it was like right behind the city. Oh, no, it's like smack dab in the middle of the city, remember? Because he walks in and he's like... Well, yeah, but I assume they portaled somewhere else to to study. But no, it was right... Like, you can see the mountainside where where Camatage is built, and then on the other side, there's the city that they're... Oh, yeah. No, you gotta assume there's a lot of there floors. Was, like, walking, yeah. You gotta assume there's, like, a, a break room, and there's, there's room like, a game there. room, you know? Yeah, they yeah. got arcade set up. Now it's, it, it pops off. They've got a big old protection spell up above it. Wanda and Strange obviously argue and shit. They're, you know, but they're not your kids, whatever. Fuck off. Uh, and so she, Wanda's blasting her old red energy, but it ain't getting through. And then Wong's like, move over here. Do this. Cast that. And they're all like, all right, Wong, whatever you say. And then, you know, uh, Scarlet Witch is like, hmm, you know what? Hmm. And like looks around. And then she's like, well, which one of these is a weak 
little fucking worm. And sure yeah. as shit, she finds the one guy the camera hung on like twice since then. She's like, all right, you long hair, knock off Jon Snow. And she comes down there. And she's like, run. God, and I like, wish it was me. And he turns and he runs and he shoulder checks a bunch of them and then makes a big old hole. And she's like, here you go, motherfuckers. And she starts blasting in there. And she just starts blasting. She just starts blasting. And, and she's popping it awesome. up. It's I, great. I love the run moment. I think it makes this all worth it. And it's Sam Raimi as hell. It's corny as all shit. But fuck, it works for me. I was so in and I thought this was cool as shit. But it's also a great throwback to... Uh, what ultron right age of where, ultron yeah yeah where she was that's how her like primary way of attacking people and it's just cool to see her still utilize that i man i just like i if i'm that dude and i make eye contact with her, i'm just like she's looking at me dude <laughs> like, like this is badass, <laughs> this is badass. <laughs> um all hell starts breaking loose people are getting blown up shit's flying all over they're getting smushed they all you know it's just it's a bad scene here at Combertage right now right and i think we glossed over but america can't control her powers right so she can only it just deploys when she gets scared she gets scared she makes a little she farts a little and the star pops up in the world and she's like oh no and so you know all hell's breaking loose here and she gets scared and uh i forget i think maybe her and strange get blasted through it i forget but they ended up going through the thing together and this is where you get like a, a blink of a second at like a million or like no, five or no, six no. great you, multiverses you missed, no you missed, you missed, like, you missed the giant the mirror fight which mirror i thought was thing. fucking cool oh right 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 when she mirror. steps on the trap yeah yeah, yeah. and the yeah. water thing this the water thing or the reflections no? to get out of to the get out and, and attack people from the the reflections of the water and all the surfaces so i thought that was awesome. pretty cool yeah that was really cool this is one of the the few moments in this movie that remind me a lot of what I love most about Doctor Strange 1, which is the motivated actual action scenes or, or scenarios, not even action, but just scenarios in the movie. But her getting trapped in it, using her little fire blast thing or fire, red blast thing, and it like bounces around. And then she touches it and like it turns into the puddle. I was like, oh, this is so fucking sick. Yeah. And it's like one of those good things where when they actually set up rules of how the shit works – and then you see it like a see something you're like oh i know what's about to happen and that's fucking cool and it makes it motivated and worth it so when she uses the reflections to focus them in her eyes in that puddle and shit yeah. again corny as hell in a lot of ways it's, but really damn cool she oh, comes so out of the weird. one like and she looks just like like the girl from the ring or whatever too yeah. like she's like yeah. that's cool but also it's like the fun. idea of it, it like cuts her up as she's getting out of it and she's all like broken and contorted uh i thought it was dope real cool I, real yeah. scary same really really awesome I scene i love I loved all of the spikes of mirrors mm -hmm. sort of like coming up, up at her like a trap. Uh, just It was so, so cool. Um, but yeah, kind of freaky. And I hate any moment of silence in this movie because I know here comes a jump scare. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I'm just waiting there in the theater like, ah, oh, here's a kind of scary image. What's what's it going <laughs> to do now? I fucking hated it, man. Why do you all like scary movies? Stupid. It's fun. Makes you feel just, alive for once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gets a good, gets the adrenaline spiked, you know? Mm. uh so then, anyways yeah then they get blasted through the thing right the portal and then uh you know she they go through all the cool different ones that i wish they spent more time in but they don't but they go through the animated one they go through the paint one they go through like a black and whitey one what? yeah what do you got that's that's see that's that's the thing that i was expecting more of in this movie that we just really didn't get that much of because we only go into like a couple different different multiverses i thought it was going to be them jumping around the whole time and, and being super creative but that was a big disappointment for me where the only real joke we get out of it is that green means stop and you're like ah, okay <laughs> it's kind of they weird. also have the moment of like were we paint and she's like yeah eating's hard there <laughs> yeah yeah they, but i'm with uh, this is honestly if you remember when we were i think we we're talking about uh whether it was at the end of an in review or whether it was a trailer reacts this was one of my door reacts one of my concerns for the movie right where i was like i like dr strange enough but with the unlimited nature of the multiverse i feel like i might go into this one and be way more excited for the cameos way more excited for the worlds mm -hmm. and i did find that to be the case here where i was enjoy I, like i said enjoyable movie i had fun with it but I was and at one point I checked my watch because I felt like the movie was flying by and it was. And I was like, fuck, they're not really going to go anywhere else. Like mm -hmm. they're not they're not they're, We're not. Going, I would have. Yeah, I was with Nick of like I would have wanted more mm -hmm. jokes inside of those worlds rather than us just going through them and getting a quick visual. Boom, and, boom, 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 boom. And I feel like that kind of speaks to one of the reasons why I didn't like the movie is or didn't wasn't as cool hot on the movie as you guys are. I liked it. It was enjoyable. But is because I think that the main focus of the of it should have been America's story and her learning how to use and control her powers. And in doing that, I thought they were going to have her skipping around all these universes with Doctor Strange trying to solve this puzzle yeah. of how to beat this person. But in reality, 
she doesn't really learn anything other than to believe in herself. I was going to say, like, you didn't appreciate fun. that? That got I, people laughing out loud at the theater when Strange is like, just believe in yourself. It like, was, and granted, that, it was a zombie telling her, but like, you know. Yeah, you know. it was, it, that was a big, that was a disappointment for me because I'm like, this this is, that, that's what but, this should have been about, right? Him teaching yeah. her how to use, how to control these powers. Like he had to control his powers back in the day. But, but instead, but, she's just like, you got to fight the witch. And she's like, all right. I, I feel like the the growth in Doctor Strange is, is I mean the movie is about him and at the end of the day he puts down the knife he hands the knife over to someone else right that's the whole uh, I guess I, I feel but like that's, that's not, the whole that was theme one line in the very beginning of the movie and then he I guess yeah but it, it's like it, and I think it ties into what Tim was saying of like that w- might have been the only way for him to have also survived what was going to go forward right. Yeah, I just think it wasn't as well yeah. set up as it was in the first one. Because the, fir- the theme in the first one was it's not about you, right? And so he learned every single thing that he had done in his life was motivated by selfishness and ego. And that in order to overcome this this thing, he needed to actually, like, be a better person and, and sacrifice himself. And, like, you know, do stuff for other people, which I thought was good. And this one, I got to the end of I it mean- and I was like... I guess he's been he learned how to hand it over, but that I mean I totally forgot about that line by the time we get to the end of this. Yeah. I, and if you had told me what the theme was, I would have said something to the fact that like power corrupts because every single iteration of him has destroyed these universes. So I didn't really I didn't really put two and two together what we're supposed to walk away with this film. You know? I I don't necessarily think that by the end of the second one or the first movie he's sorted that all out i think that it bleeds over to this and him like fixing the watch is symbolic of him letting go of um what's her name christine McAdams. Christine. Yeah. yeah and and that is now we're finally getting the growth of he's like she'll be happier yeah but that's two different things going. right like we're talking about i don't think that someone that was a different are. life and then and then her saying like you always have to be in control of everything i don't know it's just mm-hmm. a lot of this muddle themes well, there that could have been a slightly better done i think hold on andy had his hand raised and, and then i want to say something um i i'm with nick and greg that i would have loved to have seen all, a bunch of different universes just kind of just get us in there for a little bit um in the way that i think the best show has presented universes before greg the family guy episode of the multiverse where they're sure. jumping and suddenly they're in the disney world and they all look like disney characters and yeah. suddenly they're in 3d like um obviously that's a joke because when we got out of the movie lucy james and tam were like well we just saw everything everywhere all at once and like this, that was a kind of re- use the multiverse. that kind of ruined this movie for us so, yeah. i i just wanted to see more versions and creative ways that they can kind of do that but well, you can't really do that when you are trying to show that America has no control over what she's doing in a way. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Right, but the whole movie is supposed to be about like building up to her. Listen, when we first start out and you have a Marvel character who's like, I don't know how to control my powers. My assumption is that by the end of it, they're going to figure out how to control their powers and they're going to figure out how to do that to kill the big baddie. And she did. But the build up to that, there were no steps. It was literally just Stephen being like, you believe in yourself. And it was fucking weird and kind of and kind of just didn't feel validating at all or, or justified um but i'll say like them going through that multiverse and the paint and stuff was weird to me i think they did it better in the first one where they see the hands with the little hands and all that stuff i think the visuals there and the kaleidoscopeness and the cities falling in on each other was way cooler than anything we saw I, I don't think it's helpful either that like you go through four or five whatever they are the number of the different multiverses they fall through and i'm like all of those are awesome and then they end up in it's New York, except it's, it's solar power. The there's plants everywhere. I was like, yeah. oh, all right, well, That's we're weird. here. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I, I think it was the wisest call in the world to not do what we all thought and have them spend a bunch of time in a bunch of different multiverses. I think kind of just having this idea of, look, they're all out there. We're throwing them through here, but we're going to focus on one. And I love that they focused mm-hmm. on the Illuminati one. Let's get into this. Let's have the history of this. Let's build up this world and kind of make it matter so that when all these characters are killed off it means something to us and that's what ends up happening here and like kevin was saying earlier it's like it means something to our actual heroes which are strange himself and uh, eventually it's going to be uh america in our 616 universe now um but i am 100 percent with nick on the flip side where it is so infinitely less cool than the scene we got in the first movie that is one of the mcu's all-time best this one was definitely not i think it's gonna be fun to frame by frame one day and look at because a lot of stuff we saw in the trailers like the living tribunal and stuff that's all just here yep. like that's all just yep. thrown th- through we see the noir uh universe we see like hints at some stuff and like well that's just kind of neat whatever like the first movie did it so much better uh but i do think that 
one of the things I appreciate most about this movie is, you know, we sit here and watch these trailers, we talk about them, we break them down and all this stuff. This movie's not what I thought it was going to be based on the trailers and like even little things like his cape getting torn. So then he has the the blue patch on it. Like that was a choice, I think, to throw us off in the trailers of we were convinced that was a different strange. And that's how they signif signify that it's different. So I thought those kind of choices were cool. And it's just I like that the movie did things I didn't expect and like kind of just told its own plot as opposed to, oh, Multiverse of Madness. Of course, they're just going to go to a bunch of places and cameo here and cameo there. It's like they made the cameos actually matter and serve the plot. So I appreciate yeah. that. But it is called the Multiverse of Madness. And when you have a movie called the Multiverse of Madness, you only go to three multiverses and it's not that madness. I'm like, I don't know, kind of a letdown. Like I thought when we watched the trailer, I was like, he's going to be fucking jumping constantly with this thing. What's that porthole to this cool thing? And then we got the keep. I don't know. And then I just say it was a lot more straightforward and simpler of a movie. A lot of walking in this movie also, specifically this scene where they're going to walk for 20 minutes and, ex and, and tell you some exposition on where she came from with her, with her parents and all that stuff. And I'm like, all right, cool. I was <laughs> Nick and his hate of walking. Jesus Christ. I mean, you just walk everywhere, man. It's just walking scene after walking scene after walking scene with one joke in it about the green instead of the red. It was weird. So anyways, we're in that New York solar power now, all that jazz, right? Uh, they put together, they should find the Doctor Strange of that world. They come down, they run into Bruce Campbell in the conversation we already talked about. And then uh, he, you know, grabs the thing. This is a good replica from you stole from the Doctor Strange Museum. What's that all about? Blah, blah, blah. Then he puts the hex on him to make him fight his hand forever. And then an evil dead weeks. nod. <laughs> I was like, bro. Maybe like like a half hour. Right, That's exactly. Uh, however, then they stomp off and they go over there and they find the Doctor Strange Museum with this Doctor Strange stuff outside where he died fighting Thanos and saving the world. And they're like, oh, pretty cool for a Doctor Strange thing. And then what happens? Old Mordor comes out. He's like, well, and like oh, no, you're going to fight him. We're going to have to fight him. Mordo hates us. The bill always comes due. But then he comes down, he's like, brother! And they're like, oh my god, oh, they're friends, yay! You said this might happen one day, come on inside and tell me all about wh where you come from in the multiverse or whatever. And they're like, oh, she knows everything, that's cool. So they go in there. Well, actually, I guess we cut back to Scarlet Witch at this point, probably, right? Who? Yeah, this is where we cut back to Scarlet Witch. And she's uh, still oh, in ca cam camera cash. Camera Sorry? Pause. I was going to say, she's holding up Wong, right? At this point. Yeah, yeah, she has Wong at this point, right? Uh, and she, this is, uh, yeah, she has Wong, and this is the book part where the, she, yeah, right? I, yeah, this yeah. is where she first goes into the other universe, right? Into that same universe there, where she's like, I'm going to yeah. do Wong, and then we see her kind of like yes. stalking she, she, the other so She goes in there, she goes into her, her the other universe, we're, we're going to call it, from now on, Scarlet Witch is Scarlet Witch, and Wanda Maximoff is the one she's taking over in this universe. Excellent. She, we see uh, her being a parent to the kids, uh, Scarlet Witch takes over Wanda Maximoff, she's like, now I'm going to go out and do my thing, but guess what? The kids need her help, so she goes over there and starts, they sing her a stupid song about ice cream, that's just the stupidest fucking oh. thing in the world, no kidding. And they Wong's, didn't this. Wong's God special damn, friend think... comes over and was like, I'm going to let you loose, but then you're going to stab that thing and die, so I'll do it. And it was like, yeah, no, no, no. no. But she hit. doesn't let it loose, which is weird. She could have freed him, but she's like, I'll leave you strung up for a little yeah, while. Yeah, but I wonder if freeing, like, freeing him might have woken up Wanda. And then Maybe they time it out. You know what I mean? Where I'm, I'm about to stab this. I'll free him real quick and then stab the thing. But it's like Wong's like, oh, no, don't die. I guess I'm still here. Weird. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's that I, I assume there was a reason why she didn't do well, that. Well, theoretically, right? I, I thought you would think that if she stabs the book and destroys the dark old, right, that should break her magic spell, maybe? That she's using no, because that's a different. I think that's a different thing. You know, okay. you know that'll break the spell. I mean, that's why she's not so, Sorcerer Supreme, you know? That's why she's that's not right. Sorcerer Supreme. And in this universe, the kids know how to sing songs. Oh, yeah, just naturally. Ice cream. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Terrible Smart. song. Terrible song. Terrible but uh, another shout out to the visuals of the fucking ocean in the cup, the awesome. way the, the, the her two bowls in slow motion yeah, break yeah, against the yeah. thing, her looking into the mirror and seeing the Scarlet oh, Witch there it is. staring there back. It is. Oh, Lord. There it is. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Tim, you went and used the dark hole, huh? Oh, I should have done my fingers. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> if you're an audio listener, Tim has drawn a third eye on his forehead. Uh, he's third eye is weird. Hopefully in permanent ink. So he's Why does it have it two life. eyebrows? I thought that, that would annoy you in particular. I did <laughs> one. I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm going to. Holy Kevin's going to hate it. You nailed it. I hate it. <laughs> oh, let's uh, move on. Stabs the book, burn, you know, she gets burned alive or whatever. This sets off the thing. Like I was talking about where Wong's proved to be a punk ass bitch. I'm just like, what? Whoa. 
well now you're gonna tell me how to get another dollar call he's like i'll never tell you you can do whatever you want to me i won't do anything to you those guys that are behind you and rubble that you already thought were dead i'm gonna pick them up and i'm gonna start torching them very slowly not even like it's literally like she goes to start pinching and he's like no stop i'm sorry there's a super evil wanda mountain it's in wanda mountain no the people the people (laughs) i think that we're all hanging out together and someone magically floats us and clearly tortures us you're gonna fold you god i fucking love coward. it i, I already told you not a, a chance in hell if it's a, if i if it's to sacrifice the entire fucking multiverse kevin i will sit there and watch them turn you inside out inch by inch if they and were I lifting like all it. if they were oh, lifting all five of you i'd be like wait, 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 wait. just concentrate on greg please uh, yeah. just just hit only him <laughs> only him. with greg start with greg we love him the most <laughs> i'd be like, I'd be like how much as soon as i'm dead you're like all right no, 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 let me show you where wanda mountain is sorry come with me <laughs> And so I don't, I'm just going to put it here. I'm not sure if this is what happens, but then, you know, he opens a portal to it and it's not, they're not at the top of the mountain. She's like, could you do that? And he's like, no, you know, we're not supposed to be here. The sorcerers, the people aren't supposed to be over there. She's like, whatever. She picks him up and fi- flies him over there and they land there and then they look in there and then there's, you know, the thing of her. She's like, and then there's rock people, but they all bow to her. And then she, she's like, oh man, look, it's a prophecy. The Scarlet Witch was supposed to be here. I'm buried here or whatever. Oh, da, 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 da. Anyways, then back to uh, Strange and Shit. They're having tea uh, with old uh, Mordo, and it's like, this is great. We're all friends. Hurrah, huzzah, blah, blah, And they talk about a bunch of bullshit. And then, uh, well, first off, I left off pizza balls. Pizza balls sound delicious. I wish pizza. you could. Oh, my God. They look good, too. Yeah. yeah. Kevin yeah. had them today. Uh, anyways, though, then they someone's about the tea. They all start falling down. You son of a bitch. And, she, and Mordo's like, you would have done this, too. Like, this is how it needs to be kind of shit. You know right. what I mean? Like, we can't trust you. We love you. They dropped some for hims, uh vitamins, like the sleep vitamins in there. Mm. And just, I, like, they uh, work. They work. I like yeah. that once we see the, like, bucket of the sand of uh, whatever it was chilling there, he looks again into his thing and you can see the little green glow on the top and it's like, ah, oh, come on. You can figure this out earlier, strange. And this the editing here really got me kind of like motion sick. <laughs> like <laughs> the stretching yeah, and shit and the movement. It, it was like, whoa, this is weird. And this is trippy. This is trippier than like a lot of the other special effects that cost teams of 40 to work on for seven months straight like this is just someone squashing and stretching an image and it no, is actually, freaking me out right now i think they do that optically there's actually a special lens you can do where you oh, just really? twist it and it does yeah it's it's they've used that effect he's used that effect before i think in evil dead or oh. I, I forget the specific type of lens i did one short film one time where we rented that lens and i was like it's fucking cool in what really multiverse cool. was it though that was in the multiverse uh, where i was a starving college student Tim, <laughs> some something that we brought up in um the spoiler free review that i noticed i feel like the special effects looked better in the dolby screening than they did I, in the imax and i, I wonder think it's if, because the extra aspect ratio uh yeah. the l- less effort was put into it so like some yeah. of that vfx i think was actually worse and yeah i i'm right there with you it looked much better in this one yeah, and that's kind of wild, and it's kind of a bummer for uh, IMAX as a format where it's like, ugh, knowing that I have to sacrifice that and audio fidelity. By the way, Dolby sounded so much better than IMAX, which you yeah, so loud. Great. Oh, my God. This scene was so funny where we get the kind of knockout scene and then the circle wipe and then the transition to the Raby <laughs> Wanda montage, and it's like it is impossible to watch that with a straight face. And, like, they're I trying to make it, it this, like, evil satanic thing, and it's like it feels like Tobey Maguire going, <laughs> you know, like, well, it's so, it's so do you want me to do it for you? Here, I'll do, do it. it for you, right? Please do. Here we go. Audio listeners, Nick is looking off to the side. And he's just he's looking at the camera. <laughs> uh, what, I love it. I, it and it's style. I don't have the visual memory. What do you what don't what happens here that you don't, it, it's all it's the cheesy editing with where she, guitar, like, beam, beam, beam. It's oh, all yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and the guitar I, like comes in. We I think the weirder part about it though, Tim, is that we had just gotten the sequence where he is being told and given lore about the dark hold. And we're hearing the same music while seeing the same sort of weird visuals as a story is being told. And we hear like, like music kind of in the background. It's like, this is kind of weird. I don't know if I like it. And then it's like, a same sort of montage with the same visuals and fading faces and look at like what are you, what are we doing right now man <laughs> this is weird dude I, like it's... kevin feige let's rein this in a little bit big dog <laughs> i mean i mean there's probably a reason that's the only time we get it you know what i mean where he's like they're like sammy it you felt get like one. a lifetime you it get felt like one. a lifetime <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was i thought it was funny and you know like stylistic so cheesy yeah, yeah very cheesy 
super cheesy, super hokey. Uh, but again, like there's something about it where it's like the deeper you got into this movie and the more I was like, oh, there, this is going to be an evil dead movie to the point that then there's a deadite <laughs> the version of Doctor Strange. Like, oh, shit. OK, well, that's I can see why they wanted him for this. And this is going to alienate Nick. Nick, they're one of the people who hate this like Nick. <laughs> um, however. Uh, we've covered a whole bunch of stuff there. So let's just jump to, you know, they wake up in their cells, right? Uh, America's pounding on her cell. Doctor Strange gets up and starts yelling at the lab coat people. And guess what? It's Christine. Oh, my God, Christine, you're here or whatever. What? She's like, yeah, I am Doctor Strange, but you're not my Doctor Strange, so we shouldn't talk or whatever. And so they talk a little bit oh. about it, whatever. Uh, sorry. Real quick, one note. This is when we're introduced to the idea that our universe is 616. And I think it's a red herring because another universe can't name us. You know what I mean? Like, if aliens come to Earth and they're like, you know that you're, this is actually called hot dog land outside of this, oh, this that'd world. That would be so cool. That'd we'd be, be so like, cool. fuck that noise, Earth, Terra. We'd have options and we we tell them that's not what we call ourselves. You know what I mean? No, that's thank true. you, sir. Exactly. No, thank you. Uh, even though it was a lie, we had, um, God, what's Mysterio. his name? Mysterio. Yeah. Give us a number for this universe, too, right? 616. Same number. Oh, really? Really? Which makes it even weirder. Now what are you going to fucking say? Yeah. Now what are you going to fucking say? I mean, it's weirder, six. but they're both fucking liars. Then go eat a, a lemon, you know what I mean? Go eat a lemon. lemon. You know what this yeah. smacks up? It's like every single time we talk to Europe and they're like, we're on the metric system. Like, get the fuck out of here with your metric system. I don't, system. Know, I don't know about here. that. I, I don't know about here. that. It's, 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 they make more sense. System. It really doesn't. I know. <laughs> 12 to a foot three Stupid. something yards. christine lays it all out right that she's yeah in charge of this she's been studying the multiverse she's got the numbers she's got the goods she's been doing all these different things she's on top of the whole fucking shit right and like and Dr. it's fantastic Shane. i love this and this is why i appreciate the focus on the one multiverse because this allowed them to really kind of get into and build out shit that we we know the mcu so well at this point but it's like cool in this universe we do have a fantastic four and it, and in in humans and x-men and all that stuff and here's how that kind of looks but even beyond just the illuminati being there like there's so much dialogue details that i just love and i feed off of like the lore type shit where in this universe the baxter building is reed richard's fantastic four thing right mm -hmm. that is where christine works they focus on her at least focuses on the multiverse shit you got to assume in this universe it was reed that invented ultron and that's why these ultron bots actually work like work. it's all these like <laughs> tiny little things where it's like the what i actually like about the concept of what if right and i feel like in this universe because of everything we know they did a great job of answering so many questions like 10 movies worth of questions in a 15 minutes scene here and i thought that was so damn great at expanding the mcu into an mcm mcm it was cool multi-channel cinematic network multi marvel network. cinematic <laughs> multiverse eventually uh, mordo comes though and he's like come on strange time to meet the illuminati and he's like okay cool and you got the ultron bots and we're gonna walk over there so they walk over there and and they go on in there, and then, yeah, guess what? It's everybody we saw, and Tim's already mentioned them all. So they go in there, and Captain Carter's there, and it's fucking dope as fuck. Oh, cool. Give me a Captain Carter movie. What do you got, Nick? What do you, what's going on? Well, there? What, do you, what do you think Charles was doing before this, that he was late to this meeting? Do you think he had to take a poop? He had a call. He, he, had, a call. Like, he had a call. What do you he had to worry about more? What, what, what call could have possibly been more important than a guy that could potentially destroy your entire multiverse? Uh, he he gotta, was like, oh, man, it was I mean, these guys movie. aren't bright, right? They're not even worried about Wanda, so like, whatever. You got to assume that they they deal with. Uh, I mean, this is another Tuesday for them. Yep, They're dealing exactly. with crazy strangers from all over the universes, and this is just like, oh, we got another change. Uh, okay, yeah, because I got a call right. I, I I got a call with fucking uh, Tim, who's who's a recent sponsor. Epic. Uh, Lumen. Epic. Lu like, I got to call it Lumen. We're doing, yeah, we're, we're getting new fucking drapes for this place. You know, it, it's a whole thing, man. I, do, it's second question, follow-up question. Do you think this is their main meeting room? And if so, do they get neck aches by having to turn to each other constantly? No, do you this think is they have, their like, a judging circular room. table in the back? Okay. This yeah, is judging for room. sure, right? This is, like, their their court where they bring people to make, mm -hmm. to, to, I don't know. Who knows? To <laughs> so, themselves. to judge. The yeah. Illuminati is a really interesting thing that uh, is actually pretty new to the the comics universes. All things considered, like it first showed up in like 2007 or, or something like that, 2006. Uh -huh. So it's like it is a fresher uh, concept. And the idea, at least in the comics, is that there is this elite group that represents all the different kind of teams or, or corners of the universe, like the cosmic, the mystic, the this, the that, um, and that nobody knows about them. So it's like 
Professor X knows, but the X-Men don't know. Tony Stark knows, but the rest of the Avengers don't know. So it's like they only gather together to kind of deal with stuff that's like, yo, we don't want to get anyone else involved in this. This is like we're meeting in secret um, for all of that. So I don't think that they're like gathering up to meet all the time. And like this movie doesn't get into all of that stuff. But like, I kind of get the idea of them kind of coming in like <laughs> at different times is is because they're this isn't their day job. It's not like they're sitting in this right. office all day. They, pay they just show right? up yeah, every. Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes once sense. In a while. That makes I, sense. Yeah, but I like, do oh, think that this the Illuminati in this world isn't a secret and it's more of their version of the Avengers you know uh and i, mean, I, in the I lobby of the building i also did really enjoy just that sort of small dialogue exchange with who are you with is this hydra is this yeah. a shield sword uh, what is it the illuminati we'll see you now and it's like ah that's cool yeah i, like I thought that was that. cool too but so, yeah, he goes in there. These, yeah all these people like damn yep like bolt Black Bolt, seeing him as the first one was a like, oh, that's weird. I never watched the Inhuman series because I like immediately neither, knew yeah. from everyone that was absolute trash, and uh, I didn't re- I didn't realize that that was the same actor till Tim told me afterwards. Mm. That's awesome. I just yeah, like him because he's Captain cool. Pike mm-hmm. in the new Star Trek. Star Trek. Oh, yeah, he's having a big awesome. week right now. And Huge something week. out. Oh fuck, that's right. Is Discovery? No, not Discovery. Uh, Strange New Worlds. Is that this week? Mm-hmm. Ah, I gotta watch it tonight. Yeah, it yeah, is. John, John Krasinski again. We, we already talked at the beginning of the show, but just such a surprise. I'm so glad it had nothing spoiled for me. Um, that was shocking. I was not expecting Haley Atwell. I wasn't expecting Monica Rambeau. Uh, Monica Rambeau. Um, well, there was some hints and some sort of like, what doc, what uh, Captain Marvel could this possibly be flying up in the sky based on all the sort of zoom ins that people were doing on the internet, but. Yeah, all of this was very surprising and awesome to see on screen. And a, a lot of, again, with this and with Spider-Man Far From Home or No Way Home, it's just these movies have become fever dreams and they still work <laughs> for me in in a way that I don't feel like we are jumping the shark yet. And I'm it's awesome. It's awesome to experience it. Uh, one correction there. Maria Rambo, Monica. Right, Maria Rambo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Monica. Yeah. great great good. callback great callback. real good <laughs> so anyways like we covered all these people there they all do the thing our Stephen strange was the bad guy he almost ruined the thing like you know we were fighting thanos and he had to use the dark old and then he was he didn't tell us about it and then we told us about it and then well, how do we kill him and then it, professor x does the wah 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 and shows him how black ball shit. blue is fucking love random. seeing I that i love it that out there. also cool. and, and we didn't touch on this but like I, I know Tim's probably going to want to say some words. The music for when Professor X comes out. I mean, it was perfect. So good. Like, it's it's so, so good. perfect. And and I, I was saying this a little earlier, but it's like I, I love the idea that this could be the story of X-Men 97 we get next year or hopefully uh, and using this universe as the, the jump off point. But I think that this entire scene was set up perfectly, like doing the whole flashback to Titan, seeing what went down, like that this – that they're strange, like wasn't a bad guy, but he definitely went about things the wrong way and that they had to kill him for that. And they kind of made him do the sacrifice that, that Tony had to, that he kind of made Tony do in our universe. So very, very cool stuff. Great use of the multiverse. Um, and so, yeah, they're all arguing. And then by this point, uh, Wanda had already come back and she'd already taken over the, or I'm sorry, Scarlet Witch already come back and taken over Wanda. And so now she's making her assault. And then you start hearing the booms and the pows or whatever. And he's like, oh, she's here. And they're like, don't worry about her. You're fine. And then everybody breaks away except for Xavier and uh, Morda who hang out with uh, Doctor Strange there. And then, you know, Wanda keeps advancing. And then she just fucking kills all these goddamn superheroes in a really cool scene when she fucking takes away Black Bolt's mouth and then he blows up the back of his own head awesome unreal so fucking cool cool, right it's such a the boys level violent Mm -hmm. no you know what it reminded me of this is a weird pull but do you remember in mission impossible i think it was four when uh carrie washington not carrie washington um shit that remember the beginning she has the bullet the thing in her head she goes and then her eyeball just goes kind of oh right Mm, fuck that Um, shit was nuts it's i'm i'm very impressed by the lack of gore but the amount of violence you feel because it's like the the biggest thing is black bolt like the back of his head blowing out and one i'm going but for the rest of it like you we don't see any of the consequences i guess uh mr fantastic's head's kind of pops but it's like a fucking balloon (laughs) it's it's a balloon it's not something that like you know it's not 
violence and gore that would push this over the PG-13 rating that I'm, I assume it has. Um, and I feel like they could have gone that route, but not going that route and, and having like all the oil spilled on her was enough to, I feel like, make it feel like the violence was real. Yeah. And I, was, I think that's really cool. I wouldn't be surprised though if they had to go in there and and like like digitally alter some of the stuff on her face I, to be darker because th- that like I bet that was she was supposed to be like covered in blood. No, that was all the robot. Yeah, she was yeah, from the, the Ultron. Oh, uh, was it? Okay. But it was yeah. supposed to make us think of blood. Yeah, it's like yeah. Sam Raimi did this expertly, like to Kevin's mm-hmm. point of it's like he pushed the PG thirteen and made it feel rated R, and in some ways, not seeing the things made it even scarier and feel more brutal. Like Captain mm-hmm. Carter getting the the shield through her, like that was way cooler than actually seeing it cut her in half you know like it was effective as all hell and also like what do we read richard what are we doing with these robots you're still working on oil what's going on here doug come on it could I be some other the maybe universe. it's water maybe it's cold uh, well no i mean you, you need that as a <laughs> all the robots had fucking diet cokes <laughs> that's what runs through their bodies that's what keeps them moving yeah, that's what keeps uh yeah moving. so he kills all the if she kills all those people in all the awesome ways we've talked about uh the captain marvel gets crushed by the giant pillar or whatever after she like gets her face mask peeled off or whatever which is cool and just some awesome shit. And so then, you know, meanwhile, uh, we're back there and Mordo and Strange start fighting and Xavier goes out front, right? And he's like, hey, what's up? And he goes inside of uh, her head to stop her and he finds Wanda in there under a bunch of rubble and tries to get her out. But then the, the red mist comes in and then just snaps his fucking neck oh, all my cool. God. His oh, neck my God. Yeah, so that's fucking so cool. I, the red so smoke coming in was awesome as hell. Such a cool visual and it's silent, and I'm scared as all fuck because I know some ugly ass shit's gonna pop up. And it turns out, like even demon looking Wanda, like you know, any day I'd risk it all. We're still mm-hmm. risk Damn, it all. Okay, still. On this shit Bye. was so dope because using Professor X, obviously, as the big daddy of them all. Like here's a bunch of cool cameos and cool people that we're excited to see. But Professor X, especially uh, Patrick Stewart's Professor X, means so much to all of us in superhero movies mm-hmm. and X Y Z. You get it. But like the idea of seeing the waves come out of his head, him going in the white. Uh, background all that stuff it just all felt so right the little cave situation like being like an allegory all that stuff i think just really works for the world that this movie set up the tv next to the rubble like playing the wandavision uh intros that that was a really good touch but before all of it having professor x say to dr strange after them having just told him that strange you're the biggest problem in the fucking multiverse like we got to keep an eye on you him being like hey if things go bad get america like, I love that there's this, like, level of Professor X, a guy that we, no matter what the multiverse is, we trust as making the right call. Trust this strange. He, this strange is our hero, and I think that's really damn cool. And so uh, all that happens, and then, yeah, Doctor Strange has run off at this point to be with Christine to try to get out of America, who fi- accidentally tapped into her powers, punching the wall. She's like, oh, hold on a second. Um, and I guess, yeah, it's when Xavier goes in her head Wanda was in the room, and that's when he she comes out of it. Uh, they're gone. Uh, they've escaped through the tunnels underneath the thing, and there's a bunch of water around them on the other side of it, so it's this, like scary tunnel thing. And then, yeah, Scarlet Witch is behind them, walking like a fucking Terminator, walking like zombie uh, Scarlet Witch from the What If series. Fucking awesome. And she's giving chase, and you know, Strange is doing what he can to stop her, but she's throwing other shit and trying to stop them. And then eventually they get to the doorway they need to go through or whatever. Oh, yeah, the doorway that's the doorway into the other thing. They put a oh, he tells Wanda to hold her breath, right? He puts her in a ball and then like collapses the water on her or some shit. And then, uh, he gets she the- the other side of the blast door. What? Huh? I'd love if there was just like an, an extra door next to the blast door. So I just walked, just walked around it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, they open up the door with his watch because you know in every uh, every universe him and Christine can't make it work and but they, they still mean a lot to each other. Uh, yeah, and so he, I they, feel like that was so stupid where he's like, uh, it like it's it's magic that like only I would know and he opens up the eye and it's like oh we're gonna see some interesting stuff and it looks like it just kind of tries to like open it and then it's like then what's her face is like Christine is like hey uh, I I think the watch fits and he's it was like. like hey, uh, it was like the dagger in a uh, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, yeah. Uh, is this if I stay on this exact spot? On this <laughs> yeah. What does the eye do now that it doesn't? I thought the, I always thought the whole point of the eye was to to hold the the time stone. It was. So what does it do now? Does it just keep like loose chains and shit in there? Like, it's like a Fitbit. It's, it's a Fitbit. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was Tracks some random. Steps. There was something inside it that was helping him unlock the door, but didn't work. So. Yeah, it's kind of useless. 
Yeah. They get the door open, they go through, and they all have a little, oh, jump down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They all jump down into like zero gravity, right? And there's the book they need, and like this book will solve everything. Hooray for books. And they get it, and they open it, and then boom, guess what? Scarlet Witch is there, and she fucked and shoot some shit and she the book burns and everybody's like oh no like, close Nick- the fucking door behind you why the fuck are you yeah. the door open behind yeah, you? That and then was blow it up and then ass. blow it up no one can yeah. get here yeah it'll you, you guys are better superheroes fuck. than doctor strange and christine palmer congratulations yeah, so. and so i thought i just thought that like by the way i thought the way this was gonna play out was that he couldn't touch the book or like they were gonna fight and then and then america was gonna touch it and it was gonna tell her how to beat scarlet which was to give which was to give her what she wanted i thought that's what it was gonna be and like learn i don't know but it didn't work out that way. They just destroyed it. Anyway. No, yeah, the book just gets destroyed. I did think it was cool interesting concept, the how much the the uh, the dark hold is clearly connected to Scarlet Witch, like with the altar that she has, like whatever the first sorcerer or demon I think they called it was probably saw visions of her and like created after her, and the book. The, they open it for a moment and you see a big star. So it's like, was that to imply that um, America America is like the antithesis of? Maybe. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I, I didn't notice yeah. the the star thing. So I, I don't know about oh, yeah. that. But I do think it there's a lot with briefly. the... With the dark old stuff that you're you're touching on here, where mm-hmm. the the monsters we see, like the demony creatures that are kind of like guarding at the top of the mm-hmm. thing, like they yeah. mention in this that they're like the the guardians of Cathan or whatever, and C H T H O N, which mm-hmm. is the creator of the dark hold, all that stuff. So that does tie in to itself. But what I think is interesting is uh, how, and we'll talk about it when we get there a bit more. But I'm a little confused about how the dark hold works. Where how did it get destroyed in every universe? Like they said that there's a different one in every universe, even this universe, this was a copy. So there's multiple ones, but I don't really understand how they're all destroyed. And if they are all destroyed, uh, but I mean, how did she, like, how would she do that? She used the dark hold to send a destruction spell or whatever to every dark hold that was in the multiverse. Yeah. Magic. Magic. It's it's the Harry Potter way. Here's a spell. Yeah, that's kind of lame. But what I do think is cool about it is the last time we saw the Dark Holds, uh, besides Wanda kind of using it for the multiverse stuff, wasn't that what like the because of its power where why Agatha is locked in the Westview mindset, right? So now it's destroyed. Is Agatha released from that now? I hope so because I I like. I'd have it. to rewatch the yeah. the end of Wandavision to understand. Agreed. Um. So yeah, that's happened. Pop it pops off, and then uh, uh, does America open one by accident, and Strange gets thrown through it. Strange Christine gets thrown through it, and then uh, Scarlet Witch grabs uh, America before she can go through it or doesn't go through it or whatever, and then she takes her back to the altar because she's gonna suck out her juice and make it so she can go do her thing. And then Christine and Doctor Strange end up in a fucked up uh, collapse universe where again we'd already had it explained to us, right? That what do they call it, Tim? When they collapse on themselves, incursions. Incursions. Uh, so we're here for a, you know this didn't go well or whatever. Oh shit. So they wander around and they eventually find uh, the Sanctum and there's a Doctor Strange up to hop and like, okay, you stay out here, Christine. We shouldn't go in here together. And then Doctor Strange goes in there and then he finds himself and he's like, hey, Doctor Strange. And he's like, hey, Doctor Strange. He's like, how'd you get here? And he's like, oh, I'm fighting this shit over there. And oh, yeah, well, and he's like, well, he's like oh, man, you use the dark hole. He's like, yeah, I had to, man. No, I had no fucking choice. And Doctor Strange is like, well, that's fucked up. Can I just use it for a second? And he's like, no, didn't you just hear me? Like, it's bad news bears to use the dark hole. He's like, yeah, but I really, I'm, we're kind of out of fucking options here. Like, I mean, like, look at this. Like, this is he's like i see that but i can do it and not do that i bet and he's like i don't know man i was the same way and he's like well how do i know you're you and he's like well remember our sister died and i'm like oof is this just where this is in in every multiverse this happens or in this multiverse Uh we've just happened he's like all right whatever yeah i didn't like that either because i i thought the same thing like what do you mean i don't have a sister (laughs) yeah exactly i I have a brother or you know I had a cat else. or a cat. Or- yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And it's like, well, you know, whatever. And that's how it's gonna be. Let's music fight. Ding 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 boom 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 ding 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 ding. And it's like that scene of the mask where like, he's playing I, the yeah. piano. I thought it was that fun, but was fun. I wish it was better. I thought it was entertaining and I just thought it was nonsensical, but I it was entertaining. So fun, but just wish it was motivated. Uh, and so they do that and they fight for a while and congratulations everybody and then uh, eventually what happens he throws him into the, the hole or some shit right doesn't what does he do I forget what he yeah he, he kicks him out, out of the window, window and then he, and then he, he grabs him 
Oh, right, right, right. You see the third eye. Thing. We see the third eye pop up. But I yeah, do I love I, I, like I, I did love that initial sort of line by him of like, you ever have that dream where you're getting kicked off a yeah. fucking clip Five or whatever? Years. Like, that's probably like I that's such a cool little line to say. And then that's kind of how he dies, falls off. Well, it, also the concept of the, like this Doctor Strange losing it and just going to other multiverses, offing other Doctor Stranges is, Scary. is yeah, it's the a one. lot. Uh, so now we've got the dark hole. Um, we got a dream walk to get over there to save America. Uh, Christine's like, well, how are you going to do that? There's not a Dr. Strange over there. And he's like, not one that's alive. And it's like, oh, that's pretty cool, like, no. it. And it, there was like, our, our theater seems split in terms of energy of if this is awesome or if this is stupid. And I was very much like, this is cool. Like, this is again, hokey and weird, but I like it and I'm entertained and I'm having fun with it. Like, Whatever, a zombie Doctor Strange? <laughs> sure, why not? All right. So he, he pops up, and then he's sling ringing it up with his rigor mortis arm. I just hated the prosthetics. Yeah, it yeah. looked I, a like, little dumb, yeah. It, there was, like, obviously a, a, a com- like um, a combination of CG for the, the missing part of the mouth. Yeah. Um, but the, the prosthetics looked just kind of cheap, and I, I was hoping that maybe they just... Uh, I, I never feel this way, but I feel like in this situation, it may have been better to just have a full CG... Mm-hmm. zombified kind mm-hmm. of strange it just it looked kind of off to me yeah this I is like rad it, i just I think it's it. so rad this is dr strange like this is like them at their best where it's like in the first movie they did the time stone stuff and the whole alley fight was sick as hell this is that moment for me at this one where i'm like yo they they're committing and they set up all the rules and this works and it's hokey and it's fucking weird and but we- hey thank god sam raimi directed this movie because it wouldn't exist otherwise and i think it's a damn fun time Protect I, I me think, from the little demons. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's fun that like they set up the rules, and like he immediately breaks this rule of like not using dead bodies. And I know that they didn't set that up a hundred percent, but like the setup for it made sense. And having these mm-hmm. demons come out, him freak out and lose his shit and really get taken, and that's when Christine brings him back from it, and also uses the weapon. That he pulled up against. Um, you don't know how that works, do you? He's like, you don't know how yeah. that works. That yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like cool that we got that little bit of a payoff. Yeah. And I like Christine's performance. I like uh, uh, Rachel Adams' performance here too. She's like, aren't you the fucking like master of mm-hmm. of what all, whatever arts. she says? This thing like, do you fucking tell them what's up? And he's like, yeah, you're right. I'll tell them what's up. And then they, and then I like that they form his cape. Like they incredibly you know, fucking cool. Which is super cool. And also just a little like a little nod to the old school like voices from evil dead and like the the little uh, the hands from army of darkness that grab me like, yeah. they had that that high pitch sort imp, of annoying kinda, impish yeah. kind of thing that was very much a, a little a little nod to old sam raimi and i do love like we talked about it and i think in the past episode of dr james rewatched him talked about the color psychology of all of the mcu and the the science behind it all and everything having its own sort of color scheme and i just love that whatever this pure death version is is just all black and yep. he's got the fucking black like uh cape that's made out of yeah. them now and he's using them like i, I just think all of the sequence was it should not i should not have enjoyed it based on like my prior tastes in movies but i thought all of this was badass Agreed, 100%. Um, and you've covered it all. The thing goes off. I thought, I, again, I, goes back to hell or whatever she says. Oh, Wong's on the cliff also. Yeah, 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 of course. Wong who can't die. Don't worry about it. Anyways, so that's all happening. Like, that's oh, happening. Yeah. Then she doesn't think it's, oh, that's how we, uh, and then Zombie's there. Zombie gets there. Uh, yeah, taking control of the cape men. The thing we already talked about, like, hours ago now, but where Wong is like, yeah, we're not, <laughs> I don't even want to know. Strange. I was like, that was, that was fucking dope or whatever. And so uh, they get up there, they get America free. And, she, and this is where, or well, actually, they know she's down still, right? And, and, and Zombie Strange is like, just believe in yourself. It's fine. Just, you know, I'm like, oh, thanks. I never fucking thought to believe in myself. That's all right, cool. Whatever. I think, I think the Blame. laughter was the, the fact that it was a zombie face in the theater. Like, Me too. I think the better choice would have been just cut back to normal Strange with his eyes closed, going, you have to, like, yeah. because I don't hate the concept. I yeah. love the idea of him being like, Everywhere you've accidentally portal us to, it's been where we need to be and where we need to go. I love that as a concept. It's mm-hmm. straightforward. It makes sense. And I think it it I don't know, it just it just works for me. Yeah. I think the fact that it was, you know, silly looking Doctor Strange with a mouth that is half missing and it isn't deforming really well when you're doing the mouth animations, it looks goofy as hell. Mm. I I think one thing that I want to bring up is like the 
the thematicness of hit, or the her coming out. Um, sorry, uh, Wanda coming America. out Wanda. and no, 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 Wanda coming out and calling him a hypocrite for the dream. Yeah, dream walking. walking yeah, um, and like the the theme of like you're allowed to make these choices. And you're the hero. And, and you're the hero. And like now there's like that full circle that he is doing pretty much what she is doing in the sense that like Wong's like, you got to kill her. And we already saw the other Doctor Strange try to kill her. And it's like, granted, this is where he deviates and proves that he's like the good version yeah. of it. But it, like all of the stuff that's going on, I think really does build up to like, hey, she just wanted something. She wasn't trying to do violence with it, but that was the only route she had. And in the grand scheme of the multiverse, it's one of those things that like a couple deaths don't matter, right? The calculus, and, yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I like that. I like the thematic, like the ongoing themes in this movie. I think I really dig. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, America believes in herself and she'll give uh, Wanda what she wants. So she punches the world and pushes her through into the ice cream kid's room. And they're like, <laughs> and Wanda Maximoff's like, oh, my God, get out of here, witch. She's like, hey, oh, fuck you. And throws her around like fucking the emperor. And then she's like, boys, I love you. And like, stay the fuck away from us, you psycho lady. And she's like, hey, eh, don't hurt us. I would never hurt you. You're a month. I'm not a month. Oh. And she realizes she is the monster, of course. And she looks at Wanda Maximoff, take care of her children. It's like, oh, no, what have I become? Oh, no. Exactly, Greg. And if you're an audio listener, I'm walking around with my mouth agape. Oh, Thought no. this was done better in Into the Spider-Verse, where Kingpin's entire multiverse family saw that he was a piece of shit. Really? Uh, but Oh, I totally disagree. You're allowed to, but you have something drawn on your face. So I have to fucking listen to you. <laughs> uh, it's got two eyebrows, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> also, we're going to kill Andy with a button. Uh, yeah. uh, and so that's anyway, a yeah, there, that's a good callback. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so she sees it. And she's like, fuck, this sucks. All right, sorry. Peace, everybody. I'll go back through the hole. She goes back through the hole, and she's like, all right, you know what, guys? I fucked all this up. I'm going to collapse everything upon myself. I was wrong. I'm you sorry. know what? I overreacted. Yeah, you know what? It turns <laughs> out bad. Vision was right before, and I should have listened to him. Bad Again, day. I forgot someone to me off in traffic. Yeah. Listen, so, yeah. nothing I could say right now is going to make up for this. I'm just going to agree disagree. I'm just going <laughs> to John Hamm. The John Hamm from What Hot America is over. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm she's like, right everybody get out of here. I'm going to collapse this shit on myself. And then uh, Doctor Strange is like, all right, peace. And he gets out of the zombie. And he originally, I was like, what's up? He's like, America figured it out. She believes in herself. She's going to come get us in a second. Like, okay, cool. And America and Wong, they get out of there. And then it, the thing collapses. And then there's like a little little red fart or whatever she dies and just crush 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 and Does then she die uh, or is she like blooping somewhere else yeah i yeah. think she's dead but it's open to interpretation kev we'll yeah. see in the next 10 years of the mcu if uh Scar this scarlet witch shows back up tim what do you think there are there are so so many where there's smokes greg where there's smokes there's fires, there's fires. um and there is so like much duck. Mm -hmm. there's so much uh evidence out there that there's gonna be a scarlet witch movie so i imagine that it's gonna be our wanda but with multiverse shenanigans anything's possible i do think it's gonna be 616 wanda though that when they know. toss Wong, when they toss wong down and it looked like he died and but it went into the fog or whatever the first thing i was like well i don't believe anything until i see a body so it's the same thing here right that yeah, yeah she could mm -hmm. easily blink herself somewhere else um oh shit i had a thought it's gone but don't mind yeah well, but I when it comes back you let me know Okay. Back in uh, old uh, Doctor Strange fucked up universe while they wait for America to get there. Uh, Doctor Strange is like, listen, Christine, by the way, I love you and I've always loved you and kind of shit and whatever. Oh, like, it was just, yeah. you know, I love you. And she's like, I hear you, man. It's cool. But like, we're not, it just doesn't, you don't, you know, it's not going to happen. Like, you know, I love that. Like, I love you oh, in every I, universe. I, I loved that line. Yeah. That was cool. Uh, yeah. I, I remembered what I was going to say. There is limitations now to bringing other people f from different universes into our universe because now we know that that could lead to an incursion, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if, if they do that, like, they have to deal with that as a consequences. Consequence? I mean, I imagine that's going to be what the post credit scenes teasing, right? Mm -hmm. Of them dealing with all that with mm -hmm. Clea. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet, though, Chief. So it says that all happens. Congratulations. Uh, they come and get America comes and get them, get, get them and puts everybody back. And then uh, back at Convertage, America's training uh, to be a little wizard. And, uh, you know, Wong and Dr. Strange see that. And they're like, that's cool. And she's a lot like you, man. He's like, ha ha, man. And then Dr. Strange bows and Wong's like, thanks for bowing. 
And then Doctor Strange's like, I'm going back to Love New York. It. I'm going to finally be happy because I asked everybody if you're happy. And I asked if you're happy. Are you happy? And he's like, I'm happy as happy you can be. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he goes back to New York and he's like, cool. Now I'm happy to walk on the street. And he walks out and two girls are like, oh, man, it's Doctor fucking Strange. We're about to die. You the see wig these looks people, even worse somehow. You see these people in real world. <laughs> yeah, that. You see people in real world. We die. That's what happens. And like the girl next to like, there's no way you're going to die. And Strange's like, Wah! And he starts fucking screaming in a crosswalk. Everybody's like, oh my God, we're about to die. And then what happens? Fucking third eye blinks open. Disgusting. I hate so it. So gross. I, I hate it. it. It's like that old movie, the old one, uh, the old horror movie you'd watch as a kid where the kid's parents went out of town and then they did a similar thing with the dark hole. And then there was an eye in the kid's hand. And they had to stab it with a piece mm. of glass. Oh, that always fucked me up. Oh, that fucked me up. Yeah. But then it's credits, and we get some credits and congratulations. Like, man, I, they left Doctor Strange in quite the predicament. Can't wait to see, you know, what will happen next. And then what happens? He's back in the street. He's bopping around, be bopping around like a D-Lo oh, Brown. We're like, oh, fuck, you got to control this. That's pretty cool. And then what happens? Bam, Charlize Theron pops in. She's like, Dominic Toretto has gone mad. You, know, you got to fucking come help me get this. And she goes, and cuts up the fucking green screen. And then you look in, it looks like Dormammu's universe out there. There's yeah. been an incursion. Are you want? Do you want to come help me? And Doc Strange is like, whoop, whoop, guess what? I don't fucking care about anything yeah let's go i don't need to go to the bathroom or anything let's just go do it right now and then they pop through and boom, boom and then she's like you don't need more a pack credits. you don't you don't gotta like you toiletries or nothing he's like nah, nah man like, like i'm I in can, for i can magically brush my teeth whenever i want to there, there will be a cvs in the fucking dark <laughs> what, what are they called the dark dimension. dark dark dimension in this in it's, this dimension we only have Dwayne reeds yeah what do you got oh I was just Dwayne say it's, it's interesting the distinction of dimensions <laughs> versus uh universes versus you know where it's like the dark dimension is that a a different universe cuz it was it kind of sounded like the dark dimension was another universe that was totally engulfed by Dormammu, right? Yeah, they talk about how it had like time doesn't like matter there and all. Yeah. It's like totally removed from the multiverse, but I think. He can't travel between universes, right? That's that's why America's powers are so unique. So it's one of those things that like so that can't be a different universe. So does again a universe have multiple it's dimensions place, in it? It's a place where dimensions don't exist, Kevin. I don't think dimensions don't exist. Don't exist. Everybody knows your name. And, and I'm yeah, I mean, like, I'm pissed off Charlie Stern didn't have the bowl cut. Like, come on. <laughs> come on, guys. Show some courage. Wow. No, Kevin, I think it's one of those things like the um, Citadel at the end of Loki Time. and even the, where the Book of uh, Vashanti was in this, where it's like the space between multiverse stuff. Like, I think the dark dimension is is more that as opposed to a universe of a multiverse itself mm. well, I love how many between. questions are brought up is what I'm saying good song I think I love the way that this movie kind of ends where it's like it wraps everything up I do think it works as like a standalone thing and I think it works really well as kind of the end of stories that have been built up for the last couple movies and, and WandaVision in particular and I love that they end it with him immediately getting the ramifications for the choices he made in this of using the dark old getting that third eye where like it's like oh shit like they're not just gonna let him get off scot-free he's not oh he's the good guy so he gets to do whatever he wants and figure it out like to Kevin's point about building up the themes that they kind of worked with this of Wanda does it and you know she's a villain he does it he's the hero but this it's like no it is corrupting him too and uh getting that post-credit scene like I love that it reminds me of phase one and two post-credit scenes in MCU where it's like oh we're building a brand new story right now like this is not a familiar character coming back it's somebody new and um for comic people it's like Clea being Doctor Strange's wife in the future and like she is becomes his apprentice in uh most of the storylines and stuff that's cool but she's the niece of dormammu which is really interesting especially because in the, the mcu always kind of changes and adapts i could see the i could see the sort of, resemblance yeah, the resemblance yeah well the, the eye makeup right and stuff like then her look kind of looks like casilius and all them from mm -hmm. the mm. from the last movie that's but cool. um i i'm standing by the my theory that i think that dormammu is going to be a variant of dr strange and that i don't know if this clea is going to end up with doctor strange because of that all the way 20 years what's up andy what would you do tim God. you're sitting in the theater you're like wow what a movie what a movie we just watched wait for the post credit scene or mid credit scene or whatever and doctor strange he's be popping around like d-lo brown on the streets mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you just see a hand on his shoulder a hand on his shoulder and you just hear eddie what would you do? <laughs> what would you do if Tom Hardy managed to fucking get in this movie? So he figured mad. it out. Like, how did he get in here? <laughs> Tom! <laughs> it was like ants. It was like, well, how did his ants get in here? <laughs> Let's do a thing I like to call. And then you get the Bruce Campbell and then credit scene.
Yeah, it's over, one. which is a fun throwaway one. Yeah, very Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. Um, all right, haiku in review time. Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If it's not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. I'm going to be honest. I don't think we have ever gotten this many haikus, so I'm not going to be able to read them all, but you can Whoa. go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write wow. your reviews in haiku forms. But we got we got some gold today, boys. Uh, let me tell you that. Where do I want to start? Um, I want to start with one that I, I read earlier, and I'm like, oh, this is damn good. Tracking Shot Sam writes in and says it's a multi-part haiku, so strap in. Halloween in May, double, double, toil, trouble. Let her go, you witch. Wanda lacks children. Illuminati no more. Don't read the Darkhold. Strange reads the Darkhold. He's really a hypocrite. This film lacks vision. Ah, <laughs> wow. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, Loren says, Sam Raimi slasher. Scarlet did an Omni-Man. Wanda, is she dead? Excellent oh, question. Good Omni-Man, Omni-Man, Omni-Man poll. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Joe Merton says, so worried for Sam. You don't go full Raimi, right? Yes. <laughs> Go full rain. <laughs> um, and then we got who did this one? This long son of a bitch here. Goddamn long fucking shit. Uh it's so long I can't even scroll to see the name. This is not fun. Okay. Uh the shorter one, Joel's Fonado says this movie's weird, but Scarlet Witch is top tiered. Monster, mother, feared. Ooh. Nice. Doesn't have to nice. rhyme, but I appreciate the rhymes. When it does, um, you love it. Mm-hmm. Jesus, I, I. Someone just writing an essay or one? Yeah, they, they, this is a haiku that, like, you know, sometimes you get ones that are like four or Multi-tier. five. This, I think, yeah. has like 12 haikus in one. If you, um, if you send me the link, I can format it better so you can see stuff. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this one. I'm going to read this long, long one from Robbie Rock to, to close out haiku and review. It's <laughs> strap in, everybody. Endless pre run ads. You're welcome to AMC seven fucking times very solid point cheering fills the room marvel studios pages strange fills the title spanish fills the air ponytail and blue spells it's just a flesh wound girl screams open portal flying through the multiverse end at 616 are you happy strange finally ask how are you lie and say you're fine sweet jump of railing find a large calamari dinner <laughs> wedding america chavez jumping through the multiverse she's all alone how are you, Wanda? You appear off your rocker. Shit. Back to the Taj. <laughs> Shout out to you for using those syllables. Uh, uh, everyone bows. Choose your next words carefully. Well, shit. That went well. Everyone dies. America's scared. Time to jump again. In a green New York, guy will be punching for weeks. Sad, sad memories. Also, Wanda white Watson trees. Kids. The white trees in New York look cool. They did let go. Also, uh, we're, we're, we're down to our final six haikus wait, hold, here. Hold on, really quick. I just want to point this out because this is great. In the chat, Robbie Rob says, Robbie Rob did the really long one. And it, I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Wanda wants her kids. Her dream walking fails hard. Wong takes her to the throne. Strangers rough. Strangers roofied hard. Wake yeah. up in collector cage. Christine is there too. Cameos in delight. Everyone just had to die. All such gruesome deaths. Strange and Christine soaring through the multiverse. Strange Saruman, strange. Time to dreamwalk again. This time with a dead body. Makes you go, Nick, give me a what if. What if? Thank, thank you. Uh, Wanda and Strange fight. Coolest use of dark magic. Don't take her power. Wanda fights Wanda. Kids call her an evil witch. Her kids will be loved. We come to an end. The movie was not a miss, but I have to piss. That is all true. <laughs> In the future, Robbie Rob. Let's go shorter. Let's go shorter. It doesn't have to rhyme. Oh, it doesn't have to rhyme, but it should be shorter, future. I will say. <laughs> uh, let's do Ragu Bagu, everybody. Do, 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 do. Ragu. Do, 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 do. Bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rag Guys Talk Bad Guys, a podcast within a podcast where we rank all the villains of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As you know, recently in the last few years we've put it into tiers now for the 44 villains we currently have 45 as we add scarlet witch to the mix uh so we'll start the bidding with this andy cortez what tier of villain is scarlet witch a kevin a tim a nick a 
<laughs> I would have said S tier. Uh, again, like I, I think she's a very entertaining villain, and I think she's cool. But uh, the A's have it, so we're into the A's, which means she will now be somewhere between seven and fourteen. Right? That's how math works. But right at number seven, we have He Who Remains slash the TVA from Loki. Number eight, uh, Wanda and Agatha uh, from uh, WandaVision. Uh, number nine, Loki from Avengers. Number ten, Daddy Owen Razor Fist from Shang Chi. <laughs> number eleven, uh, Hela and Grand Master from Thor Ragnarok. Number twelve, Ego from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. And number thirteen, Mysterio from Far From Home. Where do you guys want to rank Wanda? I'm sorry, AKA the Scarlet Witch. Tim, we'll start the bidding with you. Looking at this list uh, now, and like no knowing what we just said, I actually would lobby that it is the bottom of S tier. Thank you very I much for coming this- to my side of the argument. I think that it is uh, it's above he who remains in Loki. I don't think it's perfect. I think that uh, especially towards the end, like the her, is she alive? Is she dead? At the end, it's kind of a little bit of a weak moment. Um, and some of the motivations and stuff don't seem fully in line with uh, how we've seen Wanda before. But I think that the commitment to her just being this fucking villain, the power level shown in the MCU here of her defeating everyone we've ever known to be powerful, including a Captain Marvel variant. Um, I thought it was really badass. It was actually scary. And her plan was simple. It made sense. And I think for as ridiculous as this movie is, Wanda was definitely a highlight. So I would go bottom of vest here at number seven. Will anyone come and join us? We need one between uh, Andy and Kevin. You have my sword. Thank you, Andy. Fuck you, Kevin. Fuck you, Nick. <laughs> I hope you choke on it tonight. <laughs> choke on what? Dinner. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Your words. Okay. Well, That's okay. here, yeah. So I then... Just- what was that, Kevin? What are you I was going to say, well, what is the bottom of, of uh, S-tier? Currently, your S-tier villains look like this. Number one, Thanos from Infinity War. Number two, the Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. Number three, Michael B. Jordan from Black Panther. Number four, Bacon Guy, a.k.a. Zemo from Captain America Civil War. Number five, Thanos from Endgame. Number six, Gobby and crew from Spider-Man No Way Home. I would say at the... Uh, you know what? I'd go above Gobby and crew, below Thanos at number six. I'd I would go that, below Gobby and crew and put her at number seven. I would also Kevin, put what would her you at number say? seven. All right. So we have one, six, two, sevens. Nick, where would you put her? I mean, I would have put her way lower than this. I would have put her probably at the bottom of, of the eight here underneath uh, Mysterio from far from home okay. just cuz i feel okay. like i feel like the, the motivations here for me were just not were just kind of obvious and i felt felt like the resolution of her like the second she said i'm going to take over this most universe i'm like i know how this is going to end she's going to confront herself the kids are going to see her she's going to realize she's a monster and that's going to be it but maybe that's just cuz i'm fucking smarter than the rest uh, of you guys yeah, reed richards he's our reed richards Exactly. God, because what a sad no, I I is then, huh? Tim, where would you put her? <laughs> I, I go number seven. I think that uh, all the issues I have with her are very similar to the ones I have with the No Way Home villains, where some of there's some weird things and some moments I don't love, but I think overall that movie had way more to tackle uh, to, to work, and they, what they accomplished was incredibly powerful. With this, it's like, oh, man, they just committed to a really cool thing. So I want to give them credit, but I think it's less than that. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. For Ragu Bagu, Scarlet Witch enters at number seven, rounding out the S tier. Congratulations to you, Elizabeth Olsen. Andy mm-hmm. will deliver your trophy soon. Mm-hmm. Oh. Same birthday. At, now, our, at our birthday party. Born Same birthday. Joint birthday party. It is time to rank the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's getting a little unruly, everybody. At number one, we have Endgame. Number two, Infinity War. Number three, No Way Home. Number four, Homecoming. Number five, Civil War. Number six, Ragnarok. Number seven, Winter Soldier. Number eight, Guardians 2. Number nine, Loki. Number 10, WandaVision. Number 11, Avengers. 12, Guardians of the Galaxy 1. 13, Shang-Chi. 14, Iron Man. 15, Far From Home. 16, Black Panther. 17, Doctor Strange. 18, Hawkeye. 19, Falcon and Bucky. 20, Captain Marvel. 21, Ant-Man and the Wasp. 22, Ant-Man. 23, Black Widow. 24, Iron Man 2. 25, Age of Ultron. 26, First Avenger. 27, Iron Man 3. 28, Eternals. 29, What If? 30, Hulk. 31, Thor. 32, Thor. Dark World. Who wants to start the voting process? Kevin Coelho. Uh, I've been thinking about this a lot because walking out of the first time, I thought I knew where it was going and then watching it the second time. Forget everything it, you know. It Forget moved everything it up, you It moved know. it up a solid like six spots and, and th- the place I put it is uh, number 13 above Shang-Chi and underneath uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I'll I want to hear where Nick puts it. Oh, okay. 
Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Andy. I, um, I'm close to Kevin. I would put this hey, above Iron Man, below Shang-Chi at number 14. Nick, Nick where you going? Oh. No, go for it, Nick. No, no, no I, I don't. I don't have one yet. I'm, I'm just kind of oh, looking at this ahead. list, trying to figure out where to slide it. Go ahead, Tim. Um, I would say I'm similar to Kev. I've uh, kind of had to think about this a lot, seeing it twice of like where it kind of falls and stuff. And I, I think I go back and forth a lot. Um, but I think we're talking about one of these movies that I enjoy a lot. I'm going to enjoy rewatching this a lot uh, in the future. Um, but I think that that rewatchability is just one factor that matters a lot to me i know that's it's much more of a priority for andy uh but i think in terms of quality of movie and certain decisions and all that stuff i i would put this under the first doctor strange yeah. above hawkeye at number 18 i think uh, looking at this list him i think that's spot on because i can't i can't in good in good uh faith uh, rank us above the first doctor strange i think that was just so much more fun and and creative and, and unique this one a lot of a lot of good stuff in this but also a lot of questionable decisions and i just think it was kind of sloppy and a mess all over the place and not in a fun way so i'd put it right at above at 18 above hawkeye as well uh, i'm right there with uh, nick and tim i actually would have put it below hawkeye i would have put it at number 19 below hawkeye above falcon and bucky so there you go right, crazy at 19 um my third eye is not working right now, so I'm going to make us do the voting thing so I can see where this lands. <laughs> um, who thinks it's better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier at 19? Raise your hand. All of us do. Who thinks that it's better than Hawkeye? Raise your hand. Uh, who thinks it's Everybody better? Everybody but Greg. <laughs> yeah, everyone but Greg. Who thinks it's better than Doctor Strange 1? So there we go. Okay, that's where it ends up yeah. then. It ends up at number 18. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, right underneath Doctor Strange and above Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, we're going to return next week to this show, MCU in Review, with Woo! Moon Knight to see where that ranks. And then later that week, we're also going to return to Jurassic in, in Review with Jurassic World. Uh, stay tuned. We've got a whole bunch of fun stuff coming on in review and on screencast. Um, uh, yeah, stay tuned. There's some cool stuff coming, some embargoed reviews that I can't talk about yet, but it's going to be really exciting on screencast. Greg Miller, what do you got? What's the laugh about? I'm going through and uh, like making all the – I'm trying to clean up Ragu Bagu or whatever. Mm -hmm. For number 29, top of the D-list villains, the vision from Solo. Mm -hmm. Is that the movie Solo? Yeah, that, we ranked okay. Paul Bettany. Before we had Star Wars in review, we put yeah, that hey, Mount Rabbit. Okay. So we, we need to cut those out. We need to cut those off. out, yeah. Kevin, these oh, are the sacred is. texts. Once it's been <laughs> written down, it's written down. I'm sorry, I can't nah, help you. We gotta can't kill do it. it. You know what I mean? Can't move it. Yeah. I love you all. Have Until a marvelous day.